Hello and welcome back to another History of Overwatch and this is the one that I think most of us have really been waiting for and crossing our fingers. Um, we're going to be doing the Philadelphia Fusion, taking on the Paris Eternal in the Summer Showdown of 2020. Uh, absolutely banger of a match uh, that just... It just was fun and let me describe why it was so fun. If you didn't watch this, uh, especially because 2020 was just such an average season, uh, what they did is this is the change that kind of broke it. So they wanted Genji to have more uh, close range effectiveness and be more valuable outside of just having his blade. So they wanted to increase the damage of his shurikens. So here's what they did. The damage went from 28 to 30 and the spread of the right click went from 12 to 9. So essentially he does more damage with each shuriken. Plus the right click spread. If you're close to someone, you can really start throwing a lot of shurikens in and doing a lot of damage. This enabled them to charge blade faster. This enabled them to brawl better, as a, which is one of Genji's biggest weakness, right? Why would you want to play a Genji when you can play like a Tracer who just has more effectiveness close range? Um, they also, this was the beginning of the deflect goes from 1.5 seconds to two seconds. And you can cancel deflect manually. You used to have to like run into a wall to cancel your own deflect. Um, this since stayed, but I think both of these changes got reverted. After Summer Showdown, they literally were just like, well, that was a little bit too much. Turned the knob a little bit too far. Uh, and they actually just put everything back to the way it was. But for this one stage of Overwatch League in the Summer Showdown, everyone played Genji. So it's interesting to know because Genji has been... When was the last time Genji was meta before that? I don't think in the Overwatch League, Genji has ever been consistently meta. Uh, there's been maps like Temple of Anubis, where people wanted to charge Nano Blades and stuff like that. Very rarely, like Season 1, yeah, Season 1 Dive, like, would probably be the closest thing, but even then it wasn't that prominent. Since then, you go back to, like, 2017, uh, when Dive was, like, you know, Anna had the speed boost and Genji Blades was thing. So every Genji main at this point was, like, frothing at the mouth. They're like, my time has come. And they all put on their carry pants. And what that did is it massively shook up how this stage went. So everything you thought you knew about which teams were good in 2020 really turned itself on its head. Uh, let's talk about the East region soon uh, first because we're not really watching this match. Um, the most interesting thing is that Guangzhou were really good in this meta and Shanghai Dragons were actually quite poor. Who was their Genji player actually? Uh, this is actually the only time Guangzhou has ever won a stage. Eileen Genji? Yeah, I, like Eileen Genji was like very good. Um, very solid. For the Shanghai Dragons, Fleta was their Genji. Um, and Fleta was not very good at Genji. Uh, he has played it in the past, but he compar comparatively to these other players, it wasn't up to scratch. I don't think Shanghai played well around the Genji as well. Like it, it might not have just been Fleta. Whoops. And this is probably one of the major reasons that Who Are You exists now on the Shanghai Dragons. Like, you know how they always have Who Are You just sitting on the bench waiting for, you know, just collecting rings and making money on the bench? is because of this meta. Like, Shanghai Dragons recognize that between Lip and Flutter, neither of them really have that good, that good of a Genji and a Doomfist. Obviously, they can play it uh, to an easy, solid degree in which if they need to pull it out, they can. But in a meta where it's defined around how good you are at that hero, that's sort of where you, you see that split and that difference between these players of who is the greatest and who isn't the greatest, right? Um, and that's sort of why we talk about like this upcoming season of like, oh, you know, flex supports can play Lucio, like the Violet Lucio and stuff like that. There's a difference between when you just need to play it off the cuff just for like every now and then and when all of a sudden a meta is defined around it. Um, Talking about teams that thrived in a meta being defined, uh, uh, like meta being defined around them, the two teams that actually came out in the top were Paris Eternal and Philadelphia Fusion. Both teams were pretty solid in 2020. They had, you know, Philadelphia Fusion, I think, had the best regular season record. And Paris Eternal was like consistently, you know, top four, top six. Um, but Paris, on the back of Sparkle Genji, was incredible and Philadelphia Fusion decided to dust off their EQO <sighs> literally like I don't think Philly like EQO played at all that season 
except for Genji, came in, pounded on Genji, and then just disappeared into nothingness again. Like, so it was kind of interesting seeing how that, like, evolved. Certain teams, you know, LA Valiant was having a pretty solid season, weren't that great at Genji. Gladiators uh, really struggled on the Genji. Uh, Florida Mayhem surprisingly struggled. It was just, like, a lot of different stuff that happened. But this is really all the, the prefacing that you need. Genji's meta. Paris and Philly are sick. Guangzhou randomly won a stage. And that's what led to this match. And this match, if you have not seen it, is considered by myself and a lot of other people in the community to be the best match of Overwatch that ever happened in the league. I genuinely believe this, mainly because I love Dive, but just, I love watching Genji. I hate playing against Genji, but watching Genji, oh, Super Genji, actually. No, okay, but wind it back. Sorry, I, I got ahead of myself. Super Genji. Let me, let me, I, we, we skipped a whole thing that was super important here for the San Francisco Shock. <laughs> the San Francisco Shock did not have a Genji player. Um, Rascal surprisingly did not like playing Genji and does not like playing Genji, especially when it comes to hard meta. You see him play it here and there, but when it came to the hard meta, he did not want to play it. So that's what became the round table of the San Francisco Shock deciding who is going to play Genji from everyone on this team? Um, they no longer have Architect to play it. They, he has since been traded to the Hongzhou Spark. Rascal doesn't really want to play it. They signed Tayo around this time, but Tayo, I don't think, ever got in a position in which he could play with them it, because the Genji meta was so short. They signed him, but he was never available to really play. So apparently what they did is they let everybody... <laughs> try playing Genji in their scrims, apparently. And the best person to come out of it, because Smurf was playing the dive heroes, was the Super Genji. Uh, this, this had this like weird dynamic of Super picked up the Genji, obviously a tank player, and he was solid at it. And it was like a bit of a meme because if you know how Super is, he's very uh, confident in his own play. And he was very outspoken about how he was gonna do it. He was practicing a lot of Genji. And honestly, it was solid, right? It was good, but there is a difference between it being good and being able to win with it. And the San Francisco Shock really struggled with this. Of They beat, they beat two teams, right? With the, the Super Genji in. But they were like, I want to say it was Vancouver and Boston? So, like, they, they beat Vancouver and Boston with Super on the Genji. Um, but one of those games super struggled like he obviously the shocker just way better than both of those teams so they won regardless but super struggled and that led to this like negativity coming around it of like super came out publicly um and they they he was like i don't like how everyone's making fun of my genji i don't like that people are being negative towards it and making it a meme which for us on the talent was a big well, like, what do you mean? You've been making fun of it the whole time. But as soon as they started struggling with it, it became a problem. And for that reason, the San Francisco Shock, if I remember correctly, stopped playing Genji going into the playoffs of this tournament. Um, they struggled versus Houston. Yeah, they beat Houston, but they struggled against them. Um, and so they ended up not playing Genji in the playoffs. I think they stuck towards, they just focused on playing Striker Tracer, sticking to what they're good at, but that eventually wasn't good enough. Genji was too strong and they ended up losing to the Paris Eternal. In a very close match, by the way, because Shock is still the Shock. Um, but yeah, for, th for that reason, the Super Genji was retired and has it forever since remained retired. Uh, as I said, it was serviceable. They won some games with it, but it wasn't great. Uh, and so if you ever hear people talk about Super Genji, this is the time that we were talking about it, when San Francisco Shock had to sub Super in to play the Genji. Um, Super Genji was after the Summer Showdown? That doesn't make sense to me because after the Summer Showdown, I don't believe anyone played Genji. I'm pretty sure it was in the Summer Showdown in the regular season. I could be wrong by that, but I'm like 90% sure. I thought the Super Genji was after that. Was it after that? Or was it after this tournament and Genji remained meta? Was also the Genji? Oh, really? For the beginning of Countdown Cup. It's all a blur. 
So Genji comes in. Oh, so. Was this shock trying to not play Genji? Even though Genji was super meta? So they tried to not play the Genji because they didn't have a Genji player. And then they signed Tayo, but the Super Genji picked it up for the Countdown Cup. And then it got nerfed because... So it got implemented... This patch came into the live in June 16th. And it got nerfed in July 30th. Oh, so there is actually a pretty long time here. I didn't realize it was all the way through July. So it's a pretty long... It's a one month stint of like where Genji is saying. So maybe there was a bit of crossover. I'm sorry. As I said, this was all a blur. There's just a lot of Genji played. It's hard to remember all the teams. And Arns Arns or Lash. Or... Interesting, interesting. So, but that's where we are. And that's the context of the Summer Showdown and how the Genji is played and why Genji is being played because you don't really see it. So we're going to get into it. We're just going to watch it and just enjoy because these are two teams. The reason that everyone probably went on to play Genji in the Countdown Cup is because of how dominant Genji was. And I think Paris and Philly both showed that in the Summer Showdown. I don't remember, really remember exactly what the comps with the Genji were. So we wanted to try because because no. Uh, Super said they weren't able to get a Genji going in scrims. He wanted to try Krusty. Said no because match soon. They lost Arva and Super played Genji and then they side tired. Makes sense. Makes sense. Alright, so Paris TPs to the point. So they're wanting to play the Brawl and not lean into the Genji, but Philly are just all in on the Genji. Aya, are you going to cause problems here? Actually, let me make sure I move my camera up here as well. Makes it very difficult for EQO to get anything done when he's going up against the Symmetra turrets and of course the Mayfries as well. Tragic that Ben Best never goes high. I think ben, it is tragic. Like Ben Best actually had probably the best season of his career in 2020 and he actually played really well for Paris Eternal. Yeah, just to see him never really get another opportunity. It's kind of sad. Paris loved this comp on control. It was just like, it's still to this day is the best comp on control, right? Like this Sim strat where you, cause you can just bunker down so heavily on the point. Um, I actually, I guess we should probably talk about this cause we haven't really talked about either of these teams in a long time, actually. Let's, let's talk about the players that exist on these rosters. So uh, in 2020, Paris Eternal actually did a mix be between their EU and a Korean team. They essentially uh, coach Rush, who is now the head coach of the Dallas Fuel, uh, came to the Paris Eternal and they, he also brought a bunch of Element Mystic players with him. Uh, we got Hanbin, we had Fielder. I don't know if Fielder was Element Mystic actually. But uh, Sparkle's there, like a bunch of these uh, Element Mystic players came over to Paris Eternal and they popped off. Um, they, Paris, this Paris Eternal roster was really solid. They had FD God. This is where a lot of the hype of FD God came in. He was really good. Uh, primarily on the Lucio. Jisoo Basan. Um, yeah, he might have been on Jisoo Basan. Makes sense. Oh, uh, Exy. Actually, Exy was also on this team. Um, that's actually a good point. Um, and they also had a bunch of Europeans. We got Nico, we got Ben Best, we got Soon. So it's essentially the French and the Koreans merging together to make the Paris Eternal. And the team was very solid. Um, I don't think they were ever title contenders, but they were always competitive at, in most of the metas. Um, primarily succeeding the most with these Ryan compositions, these Ryan Lucio compositions, because that's what Ben Best and FD God were good. Uh, yeah, Fielder played this like almost entire season on high ping, um, and is actually really good. Philadelphia Fusion is still, still pretty much a lot of what they had success in in 2019 and 2018. Um, you still got a lot of the bones. We got EQO and Carpe as the DPS lineup. EQO was benched a lot of the season uh, for... There were two other DPS players for Ivy and Hisu were also on this class, uh, this Philadelphia Fusion roster. Um, so yeah, Ivy played a lot of like the May and stuff like that and Hisu played the other hit scan, and Carpe would play the Tracer. So uh, this is the best iteration of Philadelphia Fusion I think ever and the most success they ever had. Um, oh yeah, Chipsa. Sorry, don't, don't let me forget. <laughs> Chipsa was also on this roster. It has to be uh, technically true. Technically, he played a map and had success. Um, not 2019. Uh, no, I think Philadelphia Fusion were the most consistent and the most well-rounded in 2020. 
Um, they had an enormous roster. Yeah, so they also had Sato and Fury on the roster. I believe Poker was still on Philly at this point, right? He just didn't play over Fury for the most part. When Poker did play every now and then, he was solid. But Poker was also on the lineup for the tank roll. And for the support line, they had Funny, Astro, and Alarm. I don't think they had another support player. But the Funny Astro Alarm duo was very... Oh, Boombox is also on the thing. And he was actually solid whenever they needed to play double flex. Um, so yeah, so they had an enormous roster. Very talented. Like a lot of talent for 2020. Uh, really good roster. And as I said, they had the best regular season record. Very solid team. But once again, in true Philadelphia fusion, refused to win anything ever. Um, unfortunately, a lot of disappointment for Philly fans this season. Uh, and those are the teams... We can get started. Sorry, I, I should have talked about that before we went in, but here we are. Yeah, Neptuno was uh, had, was on Guangzhou at this point, but unfortunately never got to play due to visa issues. Yeah, Paris are so solid when they stand on the point, but if they overstep their boundaries by pushing forwards, which generally it is good to punish when you get a couple if we had won this match, it would have easily been my favorite match ever, yeah. Sato's best year, yeah, yeah. Sato had a great year this year. Also exposed, and Paris are forced to commit ultimates to hold on to this. They are at 50%, though, halfway there. Yeah, fielder goes down, which means no ant matrix, no immortality field. But the wall is committed, that was to negate the ant matrix. Oh, FD got burns down. Carpe still finding pick offs, and look at that dive attempt into the back line. All the damage being done by EQO. They won the regular, yeah, they won the regular season, but you don't get a trophy for winning the regular season. You just, you, you get a nice old slap on the back, and a g good job. Why is Poker being benched for a lot of this and last season? Because Fury is just a better um, tank in 2020, and in 2021, Poker had a ton of easy issues and could not get into Korea. This side angle. This is where he made that very famous winnable moment come to life. He has bomb as well. I mean, this is so sneaky. Could be yeah. making a play, a little bit of a flank pincer movement, if you will, but the team fight's kicking off here. Good flux coming out from Fury. It's going to be lifting Paris up into the air, negating anything that they try and jump in. Sambai are now going to be used for Paris. have already lost two players. Oh, bam. For them. That was some weird spectating, but yeah, Philly won that. The deal, and Philly are going to be the winners in that engagement. People always say Sparkle solo carried this tournament for Paris and forget that Rush actually subbed him out on multiple maps. Or do they win the maps that Sparkle's out? I, I remember Sparkle popping off, but like, literally, I remember nothing about this match other than most of the Genji things. And honestly, most of the memories are from Rialto. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, and like, I just think Paris' comp is just better. Like, I think Paris just have a better comp. This, this, like, this Sim Ryan is just too consistent and too. It doesn't work. Like, if you don't have ults, you just win. I feel like Paris' comp just straight up wins. The Ash Genji can't get enough consistent damage in. Unless they're just, like, getting a pick. And they're just so slow. Somebody has got to be up Actually, this is an important thing to note as well um, that we I haven't brought up yet. This is still Brig overheal armor. Uh, this is worth noting. Brig still can give armor. This makes Genji that much more powerful because he can get that armor when going in. To be able to crack open. Sado going weak there just for a moment, but all eyes are on Carpe, really. These are the kind of moments where you... Would there have been something better than Sig for Paris? It's hard to remember what would have been better, because I don't remember what iteration of Sig this is in terms of his damage, shielding, all that kind of stuff. Oh, Sado just got rolled. Dude, that, that sim wall is so stupid. Look, they just can't do any damage. Yeah, I just think this was just straight up a comp diff on this first point. No need for Diva? Yeah, like, you don't... Like, what's Diva gonna do? Um, for this Paris Eternal comp. They're just playing defensive, right? An incredibly effective strategy with the May and the Symmetra. And soon and Nico, they come in and they say... Shadowburn better than EQO changed my mind? On Genji, yeah, probably. Uh, I think EQO had a crazy game on Genji this match. But yeah, you, you can't argue. But also, when was the last time Shadowburn played a game? 2018? It's hard to... It's hard to give that kind of defense. Ikuo bends Shadowburn? So I think Paris winning is really kind of not, well, not on Genji in 2020, right? Like, Ikuo benched... Ikuo was a better player than Shadowburn on a lot of different heroes. Ikuo is very flexible. Um, and that's why Shadowburn got benched, because 
Shadowburn was, you know, I love Shadowburn as much as you guys. Shadowburn was like a Genji Farah two trick. Look at this, Brent. Hand Back in his heydays, right? Like, he would run the Arisa in these kind of scenarios. I do think that composition is better. But now, like, yeah, he was incredible at those two heroes, but that's. That means he can't do the cleave damage to the front lines. Immediately, you see the immortality field getting used to swinging. So we're gonna get the brawl mirror with the May Sim here. Interesting that Fury's playing the Arisa. I wonder why no one likes Diva here. I can't remember why no one wants to play Diva here. I guess Diva's. Wait. <laughs> Bye. I guess Diva doesn't do well against Mei and Sim. Sigma was better. Yeah, I think it's just Sigma was better at this point, right? But then, like, why is Fury playing Arissa? Oh, wow. How does Carpe get shattered by that? Diva had less armor? Yeah, I can't remember exactly the tank patches here. Pull window fire strike? Yeah, I guess. But if they just like use sick hands, that becomes like irrelevant, right? It's nice to hear Bren and Saito not delayed seven seconds. Yeah, having to, being able to hear them in real time is very nice. It's really him that's hoping to make Brent and Josh actually casted a lot of banger matches in 2020. Beginning, but Paris again are in control of the map first. So Ben Sigma had a 900 HP shield, yeah. I don't, yeah, I ha is Arissa Paul still like this? Oh yes, <laughs> me. Is Arissa Paul still like the size of a small planet? Look at FD got here. <laughs> yeah, it, that's still pretty big. <laughs> What well, makes armor so good? Uh, it just negates a lot of damage from most heroes in the game. <clears throat> it's just a, it's a surprising amount. Of, you would be surprised with how much damage negation it does if you were looking at the numbers. You're gonna watch any of the top four uh in the place oh yo hanbin robs fd god i remember this look at this play yo so clean oh there we go still mini window from the bat i mean just absolutely absurd this rookie that's hailing from france Playing for his home team, the Paris Eternal, and he comes out with performances like this in the grand finals. FD so good, yeah, yeah. Unbelievably good, Paris Eternal, just with the clutch. Dude, Paris is just rolling Philly right now. God is just. Paris, were Paris the best brawl team in 2020? I want to say yes, right? That was a nice play with the window fire strike. I think that. Who who was better at brawl than them? Shock. Okay. Were right. they better at Brawl in 2020? I'm trying to remember 2020 Shock. Yeah, probably actually still. They still had Moth. Shock Shanghai. I don't think Shanghai was better at Brawl, but I think Shock was like the only team that was pretty good. Yeah, Atlanta had a bad season. As much as they had Gator and Shock, uh, Hawk, they, did, they were not that good. Dude, my favorite thing ever was when you see these, these things. Like, you see all their backgrounds and everything, and then it's just Fielder in the most like... Korean apartment that I can ever imagine. Just <laughs> hanging out in his room. Ladies and gentlemen, that was, I remind everybody as well, Philadelphia Fusion's map pick. Uh, yeah. And the Paris Eternal will completely Aye. You come into the finals as the team that just eliminated the And now we got Bold Egg as well. And Bold now, Egg. We're not going to run our star DPS duo. You need with the boot powered by... You've been watching. It was pretty cool. I think Paris, you, you know how critical I am of players... No, no, of teams switching out bunch of players. I actually think Paris did it one of the best ways. Like Rush, Rush is, I would say Rush is my favorite coach in the league right now. I think Rush is incredibly smart. And I think he, the way he, the way he did it with the Paris Eternal is like a testament to it. The way that they were able to get the most out of Exy Sparkle and um, Nico soon was really good. Like they all had a niche, they all had a role, they were used at the correct times. It felt like there was a lot of sense and logic behind a lot of their subs. Yeah, you have to be applying the armor packs at the right time, although most of the time your target is just going to be the Genji. And you also need to be 
perfect with your positioning pushing forward enough to be able to give your genji inspire healing but not too far forward so that you is nico still playing i'm actually not sure what nico's doing anything one of the best in na are getting value out of that brick and they're going to be on the attack right now and as far as i can tell this is going to be pretty much direct mirrored comps throughout the whole of king's row this is going to be electric bread it's going to be so good map two of the grand finals coming at you do you think Bembe should have been re-signed? Maybe? Man, Nico's retired, one, officially? Men of Teal, thank you for the eight months. First, and yeah. going to be open for the Ash, actually. A role that he's getting more and more comfortable on, making it look almost indistinguishable. Do you think May was... Yeah, I just think Nico was better at May. Like, I think... I, I think... There are two reasons. I think Nico was a better May than Sparkle. Um, but I also think the synergy between Nico and Bembe was much better. Wobble, wobble, motherfucker. Triceratops, thank you for the Prime sub as well. Bambas had a stupid number of visa issues. It's just been really hard in COVID. Like, visas were gen were a lot easier to acquire and getting into a country was a lot easier. Oh, Headshot after headshot. He's finding his marks. Easily done. EQO can clean up the remnants and it is like it is 2018. Beautiful to see. And Josh, I am so pleased. Can you counter narrowly with the positioning? Yeah, but... Like, it can be, like, you really need abilities and, like, cooldowns and stuff like that. Sparkle May sucked. I wouldn't be as harsh, but Sparkle May is, is okay. Like, it, it, like, it really isn't any, like, up to par with a lot of his other characters. They're using the Holtz, they're grouping everybody up, and Spark is just dashing through them, trying to build up his blades as fast as possible. This is the nice thing about not having to watch live. That was, like, an eight-minute segment. That's, like, an eight-minute pause, by the way. Sparkle has blade EQ at 80, yeah. Sparkle did a lot of damage towards the end there, which is like, like, in a losing fight, being able to do that much damage is kind of crazy as a DPS. Um, but yeah, Carpe just kind of popped off there. I don't really like the Widow compared to the Ash. I think the Ash gets more neutral value. Yeah, Ivy May was really good for Philly as well. That's a really big time bank to be able to work with. Sparkle 20% ahead in terms of the blade, though. So Paris will be wanting to take a team fight here. Based around the blade, maybe blade and rally. All right, let's get some, uh, let's get some blade. Or perhaps they'll start with ba blade plays. Bit of an immortality feel. Uh, sorry, an amp matrix. That was, uh, that was a risky bit of a peek. But so pull blade. blade. The hole was there, but People were generally pretty good at countering the blade as well. Oh my God. Like, look at it. Like, this is the thing that is like the difference but between the guy that can play Genji and the guy that's nuts. Look at this right click out of the blade, right? So first of all, he understands his limits of where you can and can't go. And then he gets the, he gets the slash dash to kill EQO, then insta cancels the blade by hitting the floor. And then 180 right clicks boombox in the head and almost kills him. And then he kills him. Like, that, that, that was so fast how he turned around and hits that right click that like I mean, most people just don't do absurd, right Carpe made sure to even it out it's okay buddy this one though haven't been using the gravitic flux takes out fury no longer in the fight no longer able to supply the damage the shields the mitigation Philadelphia fusion not stopping EQO has the blade ready as you can see he's gonna be coming off with the how do you cancel blade like that um or or this is actually still a thing if you Wall climb or you dash into the ground or anything like that in which there's a recovery or a climbing, it'll animation cancel almost all Genji's abilities. Um, Fight is now with them hand it's, like it's hard to do here. and like actually do it effectively. Alarm Brig underrated? Yeah, Alarm, alarm uh, Boombox was really good. Uh, Philly at this point didn't really like the funny Astro Brig. So whenever there was a situation where they could play like that, like just bat Brig, they generally did. And they did a lot for this, uh, this meta. Because Boombox was very solid at bat as well. Essentially, Sparkle has saved them in the streets phase. Those two kills meant that Philly couldn't keep the momentum going. And even Who had the best Genji in Overwatch 1 for you compared to other Genji's players in their time? We're going to be... Um, if we're talking about relevant to time, I think Who Are You had the best Genji uh, up until about 2018. And then I think Sparkle took over. And I think Sparkle has the best Genji. Those would be the two. I think Huxel's like in the middle there where he's like, he's kind of in both eras and he was good like breaking that. But I actually think Sparkle's Genji is better than Huxel's now.
from Sado and EQO just dashing into them. It has to be a team fight win for the Fusion as well. You can see the hole comes through, and look at that. Immediately the blade to follow through. Carpe finds one, one slash two slash EQO, making mincemeat Queen. of the opposition. Huxel nice was always number two. Huxel was also go always good enough to compete with them, but I actually don't think there was ever a time in which I would want Huxel over Who Are You or Sparkle in their respective times. Huxel himself said Who Are You was better. Huxel in 20... Uh, sorry, Who Are You in 2017 was a monster. I played against him in Korea, and it was like, I've never just been decimated with like almost no ability to counter it. To find a clutch pick early on. Carpe asking Carpe for the armor he needs pack. healing. Yep. Yeah. He's for the armor pack early what about the Custer Genji? Oh, if you see me play Genji, oh, I apologize. Sparkle just got rolled. That was a really important shot by Carpe. That was well played. Could not help him from behind, and the bob is immediately going to be sent in as well. Carpe, 80 HP, and a dream. Trying to take the 1v1, but X. Uh, Exit getting the better of him in that engagement. An interesting series of events that have transpired before. Too bad, who are you? Couldn't do it in Alan and Mike's. Oh, yeah. It's, it's just the sad reality that who are you has never really been put in a position to succeed in the league. His play style just always, has never really been conducive. Like, as I said, he's like a silly character enjoyer. You know, like, he's another Farrah Junkrat Doom, and like, Farrah Junkrat Doom players have not done well since 2018. Like, Genji. Okay, hold into the gravitic we say that, but he also has a ring. <laughs> Who are you has more championship wins than, uh, well, like, rings than most people in the league, so checkmate. He's just, he's just burning through armor with this blade. Oh, Exy! EQO, he thought he had him right hey, there. Hey, I think they might have got that if Exy doesn't hit that shot. Oh! Exy fucks. Exy is another disappointing player who just forced into retirement due to injury. But Exy was so good in 2020. Like, people forget about how good he was in 2020. Like, he was probably one of the best hit scans, if not the best. Well, actually, not the best. You know, Arns was in this year. But Exy was one of the few people that I could, would compete with Arns, and I wouldn't be upset about it. Isn't he LFT? Yeah, but he didn't... I think he LFT'd too late. But it's also... There's so many talented players coming out of contenders that it's hard to justify taking a risk on Exy, someone who has hasn't really played in a year. Just not quite connected so so low, but the heels are there. Now the dynamite applied. Sparkle has to back off. He has to get away, but he's going for another little approach around the back. And he LFT for APAC, yeah. To take it away from the opposition. I think he just doesn't want to be in NA as well. So you want to stay in Korea, Chai, so he's limited a bit? Yeah. And it's like, what teams would benefit from Exe in the APAC region? Like, he's not going to go to Shanghai, Seoul, Hongzhou have Shy and Pineapple. Maybe Guangzhou? Or Valiant? Hunters? I think they like a Prita. It'd really be Guangzhou or the Valiant, right? Like, I... I, I think those are the only two that I would think would be super, like, who would be looking for him. And I don't know if he wants to play for either of those teams. Like, Guangzhou would honestly be his best bet. According to Halo, he tried to Valiant and it didn't work, yeah. So it was just disappointing. A couple of abilities forced out here. Paris still holding on strong, but now alarm with the rally. This is such a big HP advantage. That's a good point as well. Hunters are full Chinese. Oh, wow. Great boot. Is that Alarm with a rally? Dude, he gets pushed so far. I think it's because his momentum would stop. That's incredible, and Sparkle's here with the halt again from Ben Best to try and clean things up. Does infinite damage by the look of it. 
and all of the rest of his team are able to clean things up. It's so much fun to watch this guy. Oh my play. god. It, it's just watching, Sparkle. yeah, just watching Sparkle's Turning techs on Genji is insane. Really, that began with the clutch boot from FD God. What a whip shot. FD God was criticized and fair. Matt Root actually single handedly dragging Valiant through the season of first place in the script. <laughs> Honestly, true. But he's made such enormous improvements on that hero, and he now is genuinely scary. Case of Matrix used now by Fielder just to force Philly away. I think EQO in general, he was really good, but I don't think he got as much neutral value as Sparkle. But I think his blades were just as good. I feel like Sparkle's just more flashy than EQO, you know what I mean? Friend, the Philadelphia Fusion had five minutes to be able to capture point C. Yeah, Philly had been Valiant stuck here forever. Territory relying on EQO to clutch. Valiant are gonna go 0 20 Fortnite. Oh, no, Valiant's actually a pretty solid team. Like I can, like I obviously Apex like super stacked. So, but I, Valiant's actually a pretty good team. They are nowhere near as bad as they were last year. Dude, look how small that window is. This just looks ridiculous at this point. Sparkle with no blade for the right clicks to try and chunk down one of the main tanks there. Sado falling very, very, very low. Ball EQ blade. EQ with the blade. Oh. Shut down. Hambin puts him away. And now it's Sparkle's turn to come back. But 15 HP, not enough to try and put in the work. Philadelphia Fusion. Are Philly in a cap? Maybe able to turn this one now. Moving forward, the halt is perfect. So much damage being pumped into the accretion from Fury. Knocks Hambin out of his grasp and it's and they get the cap, nice. It's eventually gonna be the cap. Q to die, yeah. Like just you gotta be really careful with the blade. Cause like there's so many like it can't be understood how hard it is to play Genji in this meta as well. People are playing Bat Brig. Both have such good counters to you pulling the blade, and no one's playing with a nano. So no one's using the Ana thing. So the blade. Like, I feel like you shouldn't be pulling the blade with the expectation to kill like six, right? Like, generally you want to kill like one or two with the blade, and it's generally one of the supports. And you spend your whole time like killing a Brig or killing a, a lamp. Just pushing forward, making sure that he's triggering that inspire healing. Just cleaning everybody up. Honestly, this was the Carpe show, because I think if Carpe didn't get that kill onto Exe at the tail end of that fight, when EQO there's had no gone way. down to Sparkle, there's no way they win that. There's no way. Carpe again, turning up for the Philadelphia Fusion, turning an unwinnable scenario, or a very difficult scenario, I don't want to call it unwinnable, uh, into a three capture. So, wonderful yep. Why was Nano never used? Because you... Sorry. Um, because you need a, the Briggs, Brig and Bap were just too valuable in this meta. Like the 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 the, uh, the value of boosting your own Genji was not worth the value that you lost by having a Bap and Brig play defensive. At the minimum here, Bap and Brig are just so good at this point. Because as we said, this is over armor Brig, which enables the Genji a lot. 250 health Brig as well. And this is, um, Bab's pretty solid at this point. I don't know if he's as good as we think, but like Lamp is just such a good ultimate against Blade. A ultimate. It could be an ultimate at this point, but it's, uh, it's an ability. Didn't Bongo do the same thing? Yeah, Bongo Blade was a very common one where you would Bongo and then the Genji would go in with the Blade. But not having that, uh... Not having the damage mitigation was was hard. Away from the rest of his team. Again, that slightly different style. Already. And but yeah, you can see the difference, right? Oh just builds up his arc so What are you doing, Bo? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you what are you doing? Clearly there is an advantage to playing the way the sparkle. Was there hero pulls in this stage? I don't supported by his team, but fusion. Were there hero pulls in this stage? They capitalize. I haven't seen anything about hero pulls. I I want to say no. Oh my god, pet him. No, then he's gonna it's positive affirmation that he can do this. Thankfully, Fusion, they play a bit more proactively and they force them away and take the team fight. Not in the tournaments? Yeah. EQO did die at the end of that team fight. So there's a bit of a time... Uh, yeah, I think it was just for the regular season, right? 60% old charge from that one dash, yeah. In this fight, they're not going to wait for a rally or a supercharger. He just builds them too fast. That's actually crazy that he has Blade. Bo, stop turning off the, 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 the stream. absolutely absurd. But you saw EQO as well. His style be successful in that previous fight, netting him two kills. Sparkle with the Oh, Exe gets EQI as well. Woo! Boy, 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 boy. Imagine that, but like free flowing. Has there ever been any word if people can stream the Overwatch 2 beta? As far as I'm aware, people are going to be able to stream the Overwatch 2 beta. 
I believe the NDA was only for like the alpha and stuff like that. Generally, alphas are under like NDAs and stuff like that, but I can't imagine the beta being under NDA. If he keeps playing like this for the rest of the season, he will be a rookie of the year candidate for sure. He hasn't really played very much, but every single moment he's played has been. Incredible. Oh my God! How did Sparkle? He starts out again with another kill onto EQO, which I think was reflected. I think he used his deflect to kill EQO with the damage through Boombox's own amp matrix there. Look at that aggressive dash. I mean. Genjins can only do that if they have the full support of their team. If they know that they're going to be there with the shields, with the cooldowns to save them. Sparkle has yeah. that, that, that mind, that presence to try and do that. Actually, that's a good point that someone brings up. I, like, there's no way. It'll definitely be streamable because there's no way that they're giving it access to like public people and then expecting them to just not accidentally like show it or stream it. It'll definitely be streamable, yeah. It makes Paris such a deadly team. Should be a fusion. All right, what do we got? Pull Flux. Plus Blade. Where's the Genji at? Oh, that was a bad Blade pull by Sparkle. That is just egregious. That is a bad play by Sparkle. I think there were only two people alive. I think Sparkle just wanted to pull the Blade because he got it again. You know, he's just like, yo, I'm just going to do this because I can. Sparkle, you have been clutched. Now, I love the confidence, but that is... That's, a, that's, that's a little bit uh, too far. XQC will revive our watch on Twitch. XQC will bring us back to the promised land. Alright, so Paris has rally, so anything's winnable when you have rally. But they don't really have much else going for them. Yeah, that's a phrase. <laughs> Fusion. The alt economy, though, is totally reset for the Paris Eternal. They've got double support all to work with, but Philly are miles ahead here, and this is looking good for a long hold of point B. Oh, that felt almost too easy. That felt way too easy that XE can just flank right. Do you think Hero Pools were done well in 2021? Yeah, I think so. I think I think Hero Pools were good for 2021 Overwatch League. In a perfect world, we we don't never need Hero Pools and new heroes are getting added, balance patches are happening, but with how little the game is being updated these days, like I think you need Hero Pools. Oh, nice. Okay, Exe has been ridiculous on this attack. It has been... Can't speak anything for the two months. Give both pets, please. There you go, buddy. Exe has taken this attack into his own. Imagine not marking the flank. We're just like, it's not even marking the flank. It's just, they just ignored it. The way it was done in 2020, like hero pools were poorly done in 2020 because it was just, it was just too changing too fast, too often. But you know, the hero pools in the iteration, it's like, we just changed every stage. There was like a hard stage and meta for each stage. Um, and most of the time we didn't have hero pulls, right? Oh, the rest of his team died after that happened, though. Philly's probably gonna hold down. It was hero pulls every week, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. When we first implemented them in 2020, there was like every week or every two weeks or something like that. It was so fast, like almost no one knew what was going on at any moment. That and they just push forward, and now they're still getting the punish on Filder and Hanbin, who were left alive. Yeah, shock one 2020 season. Dory banned May, dude. That was such a hype moment when a cat finally banned May. Flank like that in the first place, and Philly respond with the perfect counter, pressing forwards and taking the 6v4 fight. That's when you know you're looking at elite teams. It's those microsecond decisions that can make or break team fights. I'll save you, Nori. This is why cats are the best. Jaws's fish would never ban May. Dude, nice play. Fury's Sig was so good in 2020 as well. I'm actually excited to see Fury go back to Philly. It doesn't. It just doesn't feel right seeing Fury play for anyone that isn't Philly. I feel like he just needs to accept that this is his life now, and that he is just a Philly player. The Paris Eternal themselves have a supercharger and a rally, and they will be getting close to a blade. So those are the ultimates that they want to try and combo together. The are they hero pools this year? I believe they said there are no hero pools. I like, as I said, the only reason hero pools exist is because there were no content. We're going into a completely new game. There's no need for hero pools. He didn't even see anyone. Matt said there won't be. Yeah. 
Not a lot of time to work with if you are Paris, but they've got ults coming back online. It's going to have the Supercharger Blade. But Good Bob. I feel like that Bob's just going to get melted. There's like no one, like, this Bob is bad because they bobbed at the same place as the window. They just back up from both ultimates and they bongoed. That was such a bad play by Philly. They just bongoed, bobbed, and windowed and then didn't take any space. I guess they rallied. Now we have to ask the question, is it worth using Bob, Window, and Bongo to counter Rally? But they are still giving health to Sparkle. So this Rally still gives him survivability even though it was used- Kinda. <laughs> okay, the armor pack off him now and Sparkle goes to engage. Oh! How did he get away with that? He was, he was like hard, five health when he first got that thing. Wow, that was a good... I don't know how Sparkle got any value from that. Slightly more time than a Philadelphia Fusion to work with, but a completion nevertheless. Yeah, a couple of things to point out there. One, Sparkle manages to kill EQO as he... Sparkle diff. ...seconds is a money, a win, I, I believe. Both on these players. Alright, what do we got? Really do. This has to be Ash Genji, Xy's gonna play the Widow again, dude. Xy is all in on the Widow Copium. We'll be rolling out here. Just poking, prodding, seeing what they can find. Sparkle on the defense as well. Just prioritizing the blades, but that's wow, a great pull. Immediately. He's playing around his shields with the rest of his team. Seeing if he can find a head or two to just take off. If he gets a kill. Look at this Wait, rotation. Paris is going in? Them back into the fight. Paris wanna be fighting them early here. That seemed like a questionable decision from, from Paris. Ooh. Turning it around, headshots coming out all the way from the flank. Two pickoffs for him, and that's going to make it so much easier for his team to work off here. Oh my god, Carpe Plus. And that, that is a beautiful little capture. It will eventually go to the overtime. I believe it only adds uh, a bit of time. It might not even add any, actually, when it comes no, to the hybrids. Yeah. It's it's just going to be down now to whether the Paris... Carpe's Ash is still one of my favorites to watch, yeah. Going over to the... Xy was thinking of going over to the Ash, and he actually goes to the McCree instead. I'm not sure whether this is going to give Carpe too much room, too much respect. And EQO is close to a blade as well. This is looking risky. If Philly win this team... Arn's Ash or something else? Yeah, well, Arn's in 2020 was like a, insane. He's, he was a different beast to everyone else on the hit scan. It's literally one of the big reasons that San Francisco Shock had their success that they did in 2020. Changed out. It's pandemonium for a split second. Immortality fields coming out. On the, oh, the overtime was burning down for a split second. Sparkle blade. Plug, surely not. Is it going to be the Sig Nine? Lift it up into the air. Can anyone touch? They do just about. The immortality field as well. But a sparkle using the blade, moving into the back line. Has to deflect, but he's going to find. Yeah, that's kill. it. And the fusion has stopped dead in their tracks through the streets phase. Who's the better, Ash Kaio Carpe? It's a hard one to say. I think Carpe has a more illustrious career, but Kai has been obviously incredible lately. Did you like the Doomfist Reaper meta? No, it made me want to gouge my eyes out. Um, I, I hate any meta in which it feels like it's just like these random one shots and it's very hard to tell who's winning and that kind of stuff, right? Like Doomfist and Reaper are both just like, they zug zug into your face and then just hope. And then they just like hope that they get a kill. And they're just like brawl. At least this, the Genji has like dash and cooldown rotations, and but there's like less one shots, and there's still like hit scans being played in some capacity. Absolutely the tech. Yeah, that's the technical time. Officially zug zugging. I really don't like how much Xy is forcing this Widow. I feel like he's not getting the value from the Widow that he needs to get if he's going to play it. Do you like Gigahog better? Not that much, really. Can you get a zug zug on broadcast? <laughs> I'll try. Xy getting an opening kill and three in the fight. But now he's on McCree. Yeah, moving over to the McCree for whatever reason. Feels like it's better suited for Fusion's comp. It forces maybe. EQO. It forces EQO to play tighter with the rest of his team. He can't play as flanky because what if he gets flashbang? Yeah. X, X he hates Ash. Oh, Carpe just goes down. Sparkle needs to turn this around. Oh, good bash. Oh, good rock. Sparkle is straight up not having a good time. Oh, 
think you got a little greedy to try and get that kill. They've got to stay alive here. Are they even going to have a chance to contest this? Just transition to Matt and Mitch zug zugging. The tracer to try and get back to the point in time. Advin has a flux as he attempts to set something up, but they're pushing into double tank ults. Overtime was triggered in the end there by Sparkle as he moved on to the point. Gravitic flux used by Fury now searching for the purpose. Oh, that was a great flux. Holy crap. He held that for so long. Surely the immortality field saves him. Exe kills EQ Odo, who moved over onto the tracer. Unless. Do not tell me to pass Eternal or about to clutch this one, please. Exe, ring around the roses. Oh. These headshots, but not quite when the shields are in the way. Allow no, 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 it's over, sparkle, it's over. That was a little spicy. Fusion. This was when Flux couldn't be cancelled. I'm not sure if Flux can be cancelled at this point. That's an interesting question. We are going to 1 1. I mean, now, uh, we are heading. Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that squad. You remember when we were all stuck in our dark rooms? Well lit. The funny thing is. It's so bright. Like, the cameras are so bright that we have. Like, we have these crazy bright ring lights, but for some reason, they just couldn't get light into the, into the camera. No backlight? Yeah. Like, because that's like, our setups were so scuffed, right? Because they were just like at the drop of a hat setups. The dark times, literally. Very true. Has Rialto been played yet? No, Rialto was the last map, right? Do you think it's fair to say, Brent, that even though the... In a lot of doubt in my mind, so much tension so that Carpe can pop off. So a lot of this is going to come down to these hitscan players. Exe versus Carpe. Rook Flex could be cancelled as Nelfin Sigma's first balance patch. All right, there you go. All right, we're going to see the same thing. Literally the exact same comps from both teams being played on Volskaya here. The Genji, the Ash, Exe's going to force Widow. Probably not get that much value. <laughs> This wasn't COVID. This is COVID. 2020 is peak COVID. Like this is like every every country is shut down. Peak COVID. 2020. Oh, I thought he hit that. Would you have a coach? Nah, not really. I don't think there's a. I, I don't think I'd ever coach a league team. Too much. I don't even know. Like, I think I would like coaching. I just don't think I like the idea of coaching. You know what I mean? Like, I think I would enjoy coaching in-game. I think I would hate everything else around coaching. Like, managing players. And, um... Yeah, just the ability to get fired at the drop of a hat because your team is bad. Or you have a bad season or something like that. Or it's just such an unforgiving job. Or, like an unrespected job in a lot of ways. Like, obviously we talk about like, like we talk about like all the great coaches, like Rush, Packing, Moon, all those kind of stuff. But we forget every other person who's a coach in the league. Like most people could only name like five coaches in the league. Um, and then a lot of coaches were like good. And then they just get fired at the draw, like cause their team was bad that year. Or like all of a sudden your like team just pulls out budget, right? Like the uncertainty of coaching, I think I wouldn't enjoy. Finishing blows after Carpe has done damage, like Reinforce was talking about on the desk. And so you really, really have to love coaching to do it. Exactly. I think that's a better way to say it. It's like I don't love coaching. I would enjoy it, but I don't think I'd want to make it my career. How does EQO get? Oh, Exe was isolated himself. You really couldn't play, like, split off from your team in this because Genji just won a almost every 1v1. Yeah, Blade wasn't really that necessary in the end. But it was a good rally. And I just got to note again, Exe moving over to the McCree to try and handle EQO a little bit more. Give him that, that presence, I suppose. The flashbang trying to make EQO a little bit more scared. Not really the case. Let's take a look at Carpe here on the flank as well. Coaches are always the scapegoats for coaches. Yeah, thing. Like, I know so many situations that have happened in the history of time where a player, like in the history of Overwatch League, where a player is being an absolute diva or an absolute asshole or just being a terrible human being. And for those reasons, that player gets benched, that player doesn't play, that player plays poorly, and people just blame the coaches. <laughs> As if, because think about it from like Reddit's perspective, the players always side with the coaches. Like, sorry, the fans always side with the players. I said that so wrong the first time. 
The play, the fans always side with the players. Doesn't matter what you do as a coach. If that's my favorite player, I'm just gonna believe everything that that player says. He doesn't have to worry about a long-range hit scan player from the Paris Eternal. You did butcher. Yeah, I said it so wrong the first time. It was so off. Like decay. The decay is a good situation, right? Where like a lot of people don't remember that decay like hard screwed that team over, right? That's a very common one. Darko, all those kind of things. People like Darko. Like Darko was being a really. I think Darko is a great example. Darko was being a really toxic person and apparently that's why he was getting benched and everything. But the fans are still siding with him because he's popping off in the server, right? In a, in a way, right? Like... That's another reason, right? Like, the players have more control than the play the coaches do in a lot of situations. Players of Philly remaining before the Paris Eternal do eventually open this one up. And honestly, it's a pretty good scenario for them, all things considered, because they've got that blade to You mean the entire season one fuel roster? Yeah, well, okay, th that season one fuel roster, the, the players and the coaches were a thing. Think about it. In season one, for the Dallas fuel, the only coach we had going into the season was um, Kai Kai. He was the only coach we had. <laughs> And, Hanbin in and he spent most of the time just trying to put out fires around. Like we we didn't have any coaches. He had no time to coach anyone, right? And then the team was on fire, and then we uh, we just didn't have enough thing, you know fire extinguishers. Dude, every, literally they just hid. That was a pretty good play by Philly. Look at Philly here. They literally just like us completely split up and. Sparkle has no idea where to go. He doesn't know where anyone is. That was really well played by Philly. They got a tick though. Paris got a tick. That flanking Genji once again, and also great understanding of. Era was late season one. Yeah, we're talking at the start of Dallas Field when they were at their true dumpster fire. A great counter to the Dragon Blade is just to not give them any opportunities to get that first elimination, get the dash reset, and it's impossible for them to swift strike into the next person. Oh, wow. That was a... Look at his ult charge go up. Look at this. This dynamite, 29% ult charge. He got to 49% before it even... We switched away. He literally got 20% from that dynamite. Then EQO is going to... Ash seems flat out better. I agree. I don't really know why they play the Cassidy. Like, I think Ash is just better. For the ability to stay really far away, the dynamites with the pulls. Too bad Bob has made a paper. Bob's still valuable if you use it at the right time. You can't just engage. Oh, there was a rock under Hanbin. Let's watch that back. Oh, pull rock. That was great play by Sato and Fury. Flash account of Genji dives. It's very hard to hit a flash on a Genji dive in these situations, right? Like, obviously, in a perfect world, yeah, that's great, but it's it can be quite difficult. And think about AQO's flank there. He forces out the immortality field just by playing the assassin style of Genji. And if it's more likely to cause it, like you're more likely to flash yourself than to get a valuable flashbang, in my opinion, right? Would have wiped them because the main counter to him has been expunged from the battlefield already. XC got an MVP nomination for forcing flanking McCree. Yeah, and like, the thing is, I actually, gen for this 2020 season, flanking Cassidy was actually a really good play. The biggest, like, um, it just didn't really work in this meta because it's double shield, and the Genji generally wins the 1v1 versus the Cassidy, in my opinion. Like, if the ca if the Genji gets, a, like, a pack and just, like, runs at the cast, like, you generally just win. Sorry. Oh, Ikyo goes down. Alright, here we go. Oh, I actually really like that Bob. That Bob is literally just built to give them time for Ikyo to come back. Oh, Ikyo. Good rock. Dude, Ikyo is getting healed so much. I think Ikyo needed to go down with that ship there. Ooh. Nasty. <laughs> the Cassidy flats out wins in Gibraltar? Yeah, I can totally see it working, right? Like, Cassidy isn't an awful pick, right? Remember, when we're talking about the difference between Cassidy and Ash, we're talking about a few percentage points, right? Like... 
Great punish from the Paris Eternal. Equal I'll never doubt Spike. His Genji is just on a different level, right? Four minutes. That's what the fusion have got to really work with and work around here as they try and make their approach, their attack. And the Paris Eternal's defense, as we've already made uh, reference to, was very good against the Vancouver Titans when they were playing. Agu was a Dante Genji? I don't think uh, Dante played the Genji for the Houston Outlaws. Did he? Building up his ultimate. I actually don't remember who played the Genji for them at that point. I think it's a bit of a. I don't like. I don't remember the Genji Dante, uh, the the Dante Genji. So I'm assuming it didn't play much. This might come down to a first pick coming out from hydration. I can't remember. Oh my! The late Genji, uh, the late Widow flank. I like it. Spark with the deflect as well. The Carpe gets the better of Xe in the end. It's a one-to-one -one trade. Still winnable right now for the Philadelphia Fusion, and they think so too. Amplification Mage is going to be used here. Ben Best falls. No more main tank for the Paris Eternal. Nothing to really Dynamite. Oh damage. my god, that dynamite. Like, I'm just watching that dynamite cooldown come down. I'm like, they're about to get fucked. Three in total, if you think about it. And that is going to be a quick point A capture. Really nicely played. I think Link's and Blase played. Okay. Well, the moral of the story is we in chat can barely even remember, so it probably wasn't very memorable. But honestly, the entire Houston Outlaws team in 2020 wasn't very memorable, sadly. Rock solid as ever. But now they have to deal with Sparkle on the defense. Sparkle point B defense as Genji has so far been an uncrackable complication for well, people he to goes, deal with. Josh, he goes. He's not, he's just gonna run. Oh, I don't know how Sparkle identifies these targets. Like, I don't understand how he like, in the middle of the heat of the battles, he just like knows where to go. He feels like he always makes the right decision. Me, I like, if I don't, I like, when I pull that blade, I have one person in mind and I am going to die on that ship of going for that one person. And I usually do die without getting that kill because they just counter me completely. But like Sparkle's ability to change targets or like find a new target after getting someone is crazy. Okay. Well, I mean, when Xe's hitting shots like that, it really doesn't matter because this next push is dead in the water and Sparkle's already gonna have another 50%. But I think thematically and strategically, that was a great decision from Philly. Yeah. Really making the right moves, but sometimes you Iku only has 60% ult charge. Yeah, he's just getting rolled right now. Sometimes he can just have those moments of brilliance where he pops off, but Fusion now with a ton of ultimates, the workups here. Paris play aggressively. They're going to use their Gravitic Flux, and that's going to force out the Immortality. Oh, Philly lived through it. I think they just wait this rally out, right? Or just use all your ults. Oh, there we go. Finding so much work. EQO now with the blade. One kill for him. Might be a second one. Uh, I like I think as I said Ikuo is good and he has some pop-off moments I feel like he doesn't respect like the Sigma and that kind of I feel like he doesn't outplay as much on the Genji you know what I mean I feel like Sparkle knows when he has to run Ikuo doesn't have that Ikuo just dies trying I think they have the same mechanical skill but I think Sparkle's a smarter Genji quickly get removed from the fusion Sparkle will have Sparkle has a blade, but he gets caught out. I thought that maybe if maybe if Hanbid was able to stay alive for long enough, he might get a chance to use it. EQ and that like that's how EQ always always played the game. He's just a disrespectful player in the way that he just he just does shit and just runs it down and then just shoot, hopes for the best. Like I remember getting fucking Junkrat dive bombed on Junker Town by him. He would just conk mine over the roof and then just like do everything. He's either going to kill three or die for free. There was no middle ground. Another punish on Sparkle. Sparkle got too aggressive trying to build up his blade because Fusion had denied that's, What a chat, yeah, like, and that, that's like, obviously that's a double-edged sword of like, sometimes he absolutely pounds and sometimes he absolutely feeds, but like, that's, you know, he, he had a lot of success in the game. What's the worst that happened? I could get benched? That is the worst thing that happens. Yeah. It's part of what made him and Carpe so entertaining. Also, both of their flexibility. Carpe and EQO were both very, oh, sorry, very flexible players. Sparkle and EQO vying over this high ground for a moment as Xe is escorted up to his perch where he's going to continue to try and find opening picks on the ash. He was pretty. They're a leader, double sniper in season one, yeah. But this time, yeah, there's only 25 seconds left. And look at this EQO trying to find his opening pick. Great hole onto the low ground. 
Oh god, that's so bad for Paris. Going straight into them. So much damage. Not a lot to work with. Desperation plays as the Ammatrix is utilized, but it will not stop the fusion. They will rip. Not and that is going to be that full hold. So we've seen every now and then the fusion. From Questionable window. Yeah, the game's uh, they, they, He had to drop it. There's no, never going to be another fight. So much AoE damage with the Sig and Dynamo, and the fact that the, the orbit pull from Orisa, like. It, the, the defining factors of this meta were how good were your pool combos with the Ash, with the Sigma, and how good was your Genji? Like, those were really the big things that made these best teams the best. It'll be interesting to see if Carpe plays for Philly this year and how much he plays with MN3 and Zest. Because they can all play Tracer. It's been working out for them. It worked against the Shock and it's worked so far against Philly. But I, I really do feel it gives too much. I completely to forgot who won this series. Please let it be Fusion. Yeah, Fusion totally have won something at some point. This, it, Fusion definitely win it. Don't worry. Just slowly trying to take whatever space they can. Exi misses the flash magnet. That's EQ. I should say. Oh, breaking his ankles, but it matters not because Carpe off on the flank, maybe a little bit too far forward, gets taken out, and that has put an end to the push here. Holt, as you can see, Paris are trying to take full advantage of this. Oh. Sparkle with the Shurikens, removes Sada from the fight. The dash comes in. EQO just about dodging, gets to deflect in time, but eventually removed. XE signature flank creator. It was like, it was his jam back in this, uh, in this season. The number of times XE is just in your backline and kills like two is crazy. I don't think it's the best idea when you're playing against a McCree. I think you should just try and play the long sight lines. But XE certainly delivers there and he has... Quashed me and my doubts. The Philly Fusion are down to two minutes remaining. What an absurd hold this would be if Paris were able to pull it off. Oh, that was a great flux. Oh, <gasps> ooh, spicy by EQO. But EQO instantly dashing into him. Takes him out. And EQO somehow still alive on the high ground. Amplification matrix used here by Paris as they are desperate to just close out this fight as cleanly as possible. They don't want to be losing any more players. I think you take that typical time. EQO, typical Chad play. If you're XC. Sure, you're, one of your primary hitscan players dies, but Fury's gone. That's one shield disappeared, and they win the fight with the Ant Matrix. Now they've got. Sparkle Is Cassidy's fire rate increased? I think this might be. Uh, this might be Machine Gun Cassidy. I'm pretty sure it is, because he, he looks like he's shooting quick. Oh, pool blade. Dude, he, that, that was such a clean uh, wall reset. A lot of space here pushes them back, but a well played, uh -oh. a little bit of a defensive maneuver there by Fusion. yeah. Paris is running out of ults, they need to get this rally bongo. Oh, this old bank, they didn't force out anything from the fusion. This is where they need just rally, just, just rally window, throw the bob on the point, and then pull the blade. Yeah, <laughs> it literally doesn't even matter the order of what they press those ults. Everyone's deleted. Everyone's that was too. <laughs> that was brutal. And that is going to be both Sky Industries going the way of the Philadelphia Fusion, leading this series two to one. What a spectacular performance from Philly, the veteran presence. Was did Sato do two? Was Sato two leader a thing in 2020, or was that a 2021 thing? Was putting on a show. Uh, everyone was doubting him. Even at the halftime break, I could see people in the YouTube chat saying, Sparkle is a hundred times better than EQO. Well, EQO dominated on Volskaya. Even though Sparkle's building up his blade. Talk about, you know, reverse sweeps or, or even not necessarily reverse sweeps. I thought it became a thing in 2021. 2020 as well? Oh, really? I might have missed it. Good old nugget of history as well. Seeing the Philadelphia Fusion running EQO on Tracer and Boombox on the Batiste for a Batiste bap double shield it is interesting why would eqo play tracer and not genji on gibraltar like i feel like genji is good on gibraltar maybe against the winston anna he doesn't like the genji i was all ready to say can boombox stand up on the uh, on the anna after not playing it in ages but instead philly they're flipping the script and they're going for ash tracer on gibraltar it's so it's i'm surrounded by cats i have one cat at my arm just attacking me and i have another one at my mic attacking me well, Xe to find any sort of heads because he's up against the double shield comps, and it's hard on a normal day. But these angles are quite narrow. And look at this. EQ no smite is in. What the? F I forgot no smite existed. Was no smite good in 2020? <laughs> Hold on.
He played Winston. Yeah, I know he came in for the Winston. Like, yeah, I, like, obviously Ben Best never really played any of the dive tanks, but I forgot that No Smite was around. He was a decent Winston. Okay. Rude? Ah, it's, it's, just, it's just the truth. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Is Ben Best Winston really that bad? I'm sure. I Like, it's hard to know, right? He, he never really played it. People, you assume because he never plays it. Like Carpe or... Uh, you know, like soon or these kind of players that are these two teams could field, and that's opened up a lot of space now. Paris Eternal could just charge on in. Yeah, trying to bring down Sando there. There was a fire nade on him. Wait, Smex was on the Paris Eternal at the start of the season. You can see the fusion just kind of backed into the corner. What? Yeah. yeah, and then he had like, then he had he had to step back because of a medical condition. I forgot about that. Nice time for those by using that primal rage, seeing if he can find any. He got COVID? Knocking him in the corner. Sparkle! I can't remember. Ooh, sparkle. Down, two kills. He never yeah, I know he never played. It was like I think I feel like he he was like pulled out before this even even started. I think he had I thought he had the I thought he had a hard thing before he had the COVID. And then obviously I I simply don't agree with it. Maybe and and then that made it worse. It was inactive, yeah. So pivotal when it comes to Gibraltar, but I I I don't think the Philly are going to have much success here. The high ground. Yeah, I don't. In favor of Paris, they're going to be building up the. I don't really like this play by Philly. Philly have got their hands full. Maybe they just don't want to play the Winston mirror. I feel like they easily could though. Like, can't they play the same comp? Philly have high ground. Philly have high ground, but Paris have the higher high ground. Yeah, they're just they're jumping top. on top of them. The Gravitic Plux is going to be used by Fury. The higher high, high ground. ground. Goes down. A necessary <laughs> commitment when it comes to that fight. They needed to expend something to try Dude, and... Dude, Fury, you're going to give me a headache. Disastrous. And it's a great... I, yeah, I think the Winston Diva is too good against the Genji. I agree. Oh, I but... Know. Getting staggered a bit there, but it's not going to matter in the grand scheme of things. Still, I just don't like Philly's comp that much. Maybe they can hold pretty well on the second point, but I feel like you just. Comfort pick hero for him. I feel like it's very hard to control space. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Earlier on in the day, but I think this is going to come down to a Nana Blade. How's Boombox is Nana? Yeah, Boombox is a great Nana. Like he's like he's like uh, he's like my generation of like flex support where you can play Anna and Zen to a high degree. His bap was obviously very solid. Eventually going to be falling down to very low amounts of HP. Sparkle in trouble here. He's eating a lot of damage off onto the side, trying to avoid it, but he's going to get healed up now. And the blade. The EQ would be better on Torb. No, you need the tracer to control space. They play Torb, they could literally not control any space. As soon as they have ults to just dive their shields, they, they just die, right? Yeah, that was... Oh my god. Oh god. It, it's so disgusting. His brain is so wrinkly, man. You watch Sparkle play, and he's using his deflect on a Brigitte to avoid getting whip shot, so they can use his dash at the perfect distance to get back in. Oh, Josh. Everything that the Philadelphia I remember that call. It was a, it's a great call. And he just counters it. Now they're trying to punish the spawners, because a lot of Philadelphia Fusion got the front spawn there. Hey up, hey up. A little bit of jukes going on here. As you can see, Fury. Fury using the Gravitic Flux just to survive. Picks a couple of the players up. Fusion, they want to fight this one. It's going to be traded out evenly, though. The South Destroy takes out Boombox. This is chaos. No more immortality. Nothing to really stop them here. The Fusion get out alive. You can see the Paris, they tried to take advantage of the forward spawns. Fusion out of position. It's crazy how good how Sparkle became a good Tracer player, too. Yeah, Sparkle's Tracer really impressed in 2021. No one expected anything from, like, Sparkle Tracer. We thought that was going to be, like, a big hole that they were going to have. You know, some people put him in a D tier of a Tracer tier list. You know, some crazy people. But, you know, like, you never know. Like, players can improve, and I think Sparkle was... It was cool to see that, and I think as a DPS player, you really need to have Tracer be added to your repertoire at this point. I feel like it's very hard to be a DPS player in 20... Going in Overwatch 2 and not be able to play Tracer. Facing off here, Xe who's making a name for himself earlier on in the year, and he's playing playing against the OG, the veteran. Oh God, that's how why Carpe is known as one of the best McCrees in the world. Shutting down Sparkle before he can get anything done. But the next fight, they're gonna have that Nano Blade. The fact that Carpe has that flashbang does give them an extra tool. To does Sparkle have a good hit scan? <laughs> no. 
As far as I'm aware, Sparkle is a D-tier hitscan. <laughs> and that's why he primarily picked Soldier um, whenever they needed to play hitscan. I feel like he doesn't have that comfort when he wants to play the Cassidy, the Ash, or the Widow. We've never seen him play it in his defense, but the fact that we've never seen him play it is, seems like a choice. Shot. Immortality field, accretion, halt, <laughs> and now additionally... The <laughs> Make the list. If Sparkle's able to get value with this Nana Blade. I mean, Why is Tracer so prominent in almost every meta? Because Tracer has been good in every meta since the beginning of time. Tracer is just very strong, has a ton of self-reliability, and just does a lot of work. Wow, that was great play by Philly. Give the man a break, he can't play everything. And that's it, like, I'm not talking negative about Sparkle. He can't be the best player at everything. He's a flex DPS player. He's not expected to play hitscan, so... And he has never really played hitscan, and he doesn't really show the desire to play hitscan, so... Sparkle dashed in front of Fielder there and activated his deflect to try and keep his Anna alive, but that's not gonna quite work, and that's another 10-second reset for the Paris Eternal. Honestly, this this McCree change, if it's able to Sparkle Cassie was seen on a Dallas on a King's roadmap, was it good? So many different looks I don't remember that. It's interesting to see, and they're still playing at high tempo, still with the aggression. Was Tracer played when Brick could one shot Tracer? No, that was Goat's meta. Oh along with not even the supercharger, the whole just, just rolled someone. I don't know who that was. There's no more immortality field to save them. Just rolling over their opposition. The fact that you don't remember it says what you need to know. Yeah, exactly right. To make something happen. And the Paris Eternal have gone back to this double shield bat brig backline. Now they, they know. don't feel comfortable Ooh. with Sparkle's Nana Blade clutching. They're forced to seek different win conditions. And their win condition now is just that Xe will win the long range hit scan duel. Whether or not he yeah, Paris is getting kind of rolled here. This is definitely the best spot for the double shield. It'll be interesting if EQO switches to Genji at some point. Can you still headshot? I don't think so. Looks like he was aiming for it though. Yeah, Tracer has been meta since almost the beginning of time. And the reason nobody ever complains about Tracer is because she's actually a really fun hero. I feel like Tracer is like the definition of what Overwatch should be. Fast paced, skill based, FPS. And that's the thing, like Tracer's always been very strong and almost one of the best DPS players, but you know, people don't complain about it. Paris cannot play in the line of sight of this. They will get deleted. And now the rally just to move forward as well. Alarm wants to lead the charge for his team. And has counterplay? Yeah, has good counterplay. Oh, good rock. Good flux. <gasps> oh my god, that rally. They move forward with the extra health, the extra armor coming out. And a great shield bash from FD God stops EQO, takes him out. Carpe now forced to try and go sicko mode. Moving onto the flanks, but he's being pressured as well. Supercharger out on down on the ground. The Paris Eternal are rolling this one. Damn, in. that rally by FD God was so clutch. If he doesn't get that rally, I think they just die. Oh, good Doom play. Now moving over to the Doom Fist, and the punches are elite. The damage is overwhelming. Can anyone stop this man? Oh God, Doom Fist. Goodbye, Doom Fist. We will remember you. I will not miss you. Doomfist, but it was cool to watch sometimes, but please never again in my games. And also, I hope you suck as a tank, low-key. Or you're different as a tank. That is... That is clutching victory. Doomfist, absolutely huge there. To win this... Billy are still looking really strong. In before Tank Doom is worse. I, if, if they somehow make Tank Doom even more annoying, I, I'd, I would be impressed. I would... I will be impressed if they somehow make it worse. They were leading into, but now it's a new dawn, a new day. Fusion are going to be coming out with their double shield combi. QO back on the tracer. Paris Eternal not willing to go up this high ground. You can see them just holding on to it. And the card's going to steadily get pushed in. A when there's ground. a will, there's a way. The Maybe there's just a Doomfist main developer who's just ruining everyone's fun. He's just like, nah, no, it's fine, guys. 
He's got these long sight lines just trying to lead it in. The grasp from Fury is going to be eating up a lot of those shots. I like this play by Philly right now. Just hang out in the room. Ikuo pushes, and then as soon as the Diva goes to contest... Oh, wow. No Smite is... Wow, No Smite got a Primal? Oh, damn. I guess they've all been standing in a choke. Paris is doing a pretty good job of dealing with this. Now they can Nano the Winston in whenever they want to go again. Oh, actually, never mind. They have Nano Blade. Don't do that. And let Sparkle clutch. He didn't have the blade. That's how much trust they have in Sparkle and the damage he's put in. Oh, that was a Who good peel by Philly. Once back, Sparkle is shut down. Finally, starting to make these minor adaptations, learning when the timings are going to be up, when Sparkle has the blade, and they know how to play around it a little bit better now as the series progresses. So Fusion have been given an opening. That's a huge opening. Great shutdown play on the star player for the Paris Eternal. And it's going to be a long time until Sparkle gets his blade back up. That's a good 30 to 30 to 90 seconds. Okay, so who do you think will be the weak one noob smashing hero? People say is OP for one week and then they realize he's not that strong. It's obviously going to be Sojin, right? Like, people are going to be like, I'm a Sojin main. I'm the best Sojin player in the world. Sojin's OP. And then people are going to realize that it's probably just not very good. <laughs> right? Like, every new hero is expected to be overpowered until it isn't. Oh. Show the cats. Clean. Okay, there's actually a really one second. Pause chat. There's actually a really cute picture here. So there's Bo on the moon rug. Pause. We're taking a cat break. Then we got Salem who's staring at us. I don't really know what she's doing though. She's like got her arm through the window. Salem, what are you doing? Why, why are you sitting like that? I know, you're so cute. So silly. Hey, Bo. Oh, I is here as well. Hey, Aya. And that's all my crazy cat dad stories. There you go. Surprise cats in the middle of a bro in the middle of a history of Overwatch, just for you guys. Yeah, looking good on the offense. I would say that he got caught out quite a bit. On I mean, according to Super on the Overwatch 2 build in Hawaii, they made Bastion worse somehow. Yeah, but like, remember, that's like Hawaii, which was like, when was Hawaii? <laughs> Six months ago? And harass the backlines in team fights. And he's done that spectacularly well so far. Sparkle is really struggling to build up his blades. We'll see. We'll see how he feels in Overwatch. Normally he builds them up when we get it. And it's because of the, the lack of Arissa. He needs the Holtz to try and combo it together. You can see that the, the Palace Tunnel are trying to play aggressively here. They use the Nano on to Sparkle. And yes, he's still alive, but they're just pumping everything into him to try and make him build up these blades. But it matters not. The Fusion. They use their ultimates to super. Yeah, the Fusion are kind of roll. Oh, Exy was just hard scoped there. I mean, Exy just got caught unaware. Fusion rolling That's this so one nice. in. All right, now I've... Like guys, I pat Bo, and now he's like, yo, let's hang out. There's going to be a rally and a blade coming up here, and no smite's got primals. So right, Sparkle needs to go crazy. Really tough one for Philadelphia Fusion. Large chance of... I guess this, like... I feel like Sparkle should just not go. Cannot be stopped. That's the like, I feel like they're just so ready for Sparkle to go. Oh, Did you see him bait out Alarm there? That was a really smart play. Fusion just played back, but now we're going to see the Primal Rage utilized, trying to push Carpe away from the rest of his team. South Destroyed somehow gets Sado. Not sure how that happened. That might be a kill there. Sparkle quite low, but being healed up eventually. Wow, good play by Paris to hold that. That cost him a lot of ults, though. Made the move over to McCree a little bit earlier. Exit hitting some crucial shots towards the end. You're the best of seven, yeah. Wow. Let's Paris Eternal stay in control, and... and this, Brent, this is where I'm worried for the Philadelphia Fusion team cop. They've done a great job of making Ash Tracer work so far on Gibraltar. Uh, I'll reiterate again for the viewers that this is not what you usually see happen on Watchpoint of Gibraltar. Ash Tracer is not the favored comp. Double Shield finds it hard to be able to take the high grounds. Yeah, and I really don't like the Philly comp here. Smite, Hanbin, and Sparkle. This I feel like it's just going to be impossible to attack. Like, at some point, they got to cross that bridge, right? Like, it feels like they're just not able to get anywhere. Oh, what? Never mind. Sparkle died. All right, well, maybe they're in trouble now. That's a massive play from Alarm. Alarm creating openings. Opportunities now. Perfect shield there. That was a big nade. Finding the pickoffs. 
There's another one for you. Like, you, that was literally perfect by Philly. That whole rotation like, took them like a minute. It was perfect by them, and then they just like lose to like an alt. Like they just rally and you lose. And now the Sparkle has another blade. They're gonna farm another nano. No smite can go in with a primal. It's gonna be so hard for Philly to get anywhere. A bit worried about not getting checkpoint B. It becomes so difficult on Gibraltar if you're attacking with a composition that can't take high ground, pushing into it. Paris is going to have another blade, which, to be fair, the Fusion have done a great job at shutting down so far. But they've also got a pressure Exe on the high ground. The tanks who have Primal available. It becomes a monumental task. Oh, no. Why did Fury walk back in? That was so... I, don't, I feel like Fury should have just stayed away and then, like, baited the Winston out. Ooh, Carpe gets on the high ground, though. Made the move somehow found his way onto the high ground. And oh my god, how is Carpe alive? One for one, but I think Philly would be happier having Fury on that Sigma right now. Still with an ultimate in his bank, but not the case. Well, oh, they're gonna go in. Go in <gasps> Ooh, alarm dies with the rally. Damn, that was clean. That was fast. The third as well, just for good measure. And look at him. He wants to try and stagger out Fury. He wants to try and take him out. White Fury has the boosters to, to this is why Gibraltar's second point is the FT point. This is like the worst point in the game. I think this might be the worst point in the game. Maybe Havana third. I, you know, we, you guys know how I feel about Havana third. It means that Exe can't just free fire from up there anymore. And Paris don't have very many ults to be able to work with. But this is still tough for Philly. Their positioning is dreadful on the low ground. Dude, Carpe just goes to the Widow as if that's going to change anything. The fusion, they have to He's just they hoping have to for gold. Play. Unless Carpe goes Last sicko mode, I'll apologize. But this feels like such a throw pick. Now you see the supercharger used by Sano. It's desperate times. They call for desperate measures, but alarm, he falls. He goes down. No more rally armor. No more sustain. Xe from the high ground, from on high, delivering justice. And that is going to be the Paris Eternal taking the map from the fusion. And they are evening it out. All right, here we go. On to Nepal. Yeah, I really didn't like Philly. Philly doesn't feel like they have any flexibility in them. Like, Paris played Brawl on the on uh, Li Zhang. They played, di like, Winston Dive on, like, Gibraltar. Philadelphia Fusion are literally, like, zug on the on the double shield. They're like, we go double shield. <laughs> Philly together strong. Force them to make substitutions. And then maybe Paris Eternal's synergy will suffer as a result. Now, it certainly didn't work on map one. They're going to go again. They're going to play the double shield. I think they're going to lose to the Brawl. Definitely potential. And the fusion, I think, have been showing. Nice. We have uh, Soon back in. And surprise, interesting. I wonder why they have Sparkling. Maybe they want to play Genji on one of these points. But Sparkle's in. Nico out uh, still. Oh, Soon's in to play the Reaper. Oh, so they're going to play a Reaper Mabral. Genji, Carpe on the Ash, very reminiscent of map one on Li Zhang. Yeah, very reminiscent, and that was where the Paris Eternal just ran away with it, honestly. They're gonna get map control first, oh, they're gonna get control of the point first. But they have to worry about EQO being sneaky into their backline. If EQO can find an early pickoff on a Fleegod or Fielder, that will change the tide of this fight completely. Yeah, they're trying to put pressure onto I feel like benching thing, yeah. I Like, Boombox was playing great, but obviously their hero pool is kind of weird. Like, this is the problem with playing this double shield against the Brawl. The Brawl just gets onto the point, and then they just get to, They're going to get percentage. And it, Philly is probably going to need ults before they're going to win. Oh, and EQO dies. This is so bad. You can see he got the assist there at the end. You lose your Genji player, you're losing a lot of damage output, actually. Real question, did Team State a Reaper Specialist in Overwatch 2? Maybe. It's not really like they can... Like, I don't think... I, Reaper's one of those heroes that I don't think any many people ever really, like, specialize in. Most... Oh, wow, he just got evaporated. Um... I feel like most people can play Reaper. Obviously, there's a lot of intricacies that make good replay, uh, Reaper players great, but... Yeah, like, and here's the problem. Like, if Philly even gets an advantage, they just can't get on the point. Philly can, Paris can just go at any moment, drop ults. But they lost another one. Sparkle goes down. Still, it matters not. Bembe swinging away, puts in the damage, and Carpe will fall in the end to the, uh, to the orb. It means that Paris... Are you enjoying the dung slinger? Yeah, no leaks about the dung slinger, you know? 
Uh, rookie Ooh. Korean talents of Fielder and Sparkle investing that's their ultimates good. to save soon. And that's another mistake, but this time for the Philadelphia Fusion. EQO is getting picked off right. early in these... Often Tracer plays, yeah. Well, it's like Reap is just like a flanking player. And like the shotguns work like a lot of other things. Like I don't think the gun is super unique. I'll say it right now. It's a lot of pressure on FD God right now to shut down EQO's flanks. And he's doing yeah. an amazing job of it. Every single time he he's is. setting his team up, he's booping EQO into the line of sight of his team to take him out. FD God really and he was really this. he was really the man of the map on Li Zhang as well. So FD God is just coming up clutch on the ball Aggression. so far. Away, he's gonna need that beat, yeah. Oh, they're still gonna blade, dude. Philly just threw this game so hard. This was just not even close. They just, I guess it was final five, so they had to use all their ults. Yeah, that's a comp diff. As I said, like you just need to be able to match the brawl. It feels like they're just like. I want to say zug zug again, but it feels like they're just zug zugging their head into the fucking team. Like they're just like, the composition is just so bad, and they're gonna do the exact same thing on this map, I guess. You know, Paris is playing it, so maybe w w this is a better map for it. But, like, it feels like they're just not respecting the map picks and, like, the things that are good on certain maps. Now, what happened to FD God? We didn't have a Lucio meta. Like, FD God is not... Like, FD God is a solid brig. People like to blame FD God and say FD God had the worst season ever on the Shock, but the entire Shock team was really bad. That year, and it wasn't a Lucio meta, FD God's best uh, character, so. Answered back almost immediately. It was looking good for a few moments for Fusion. They were putting in decent damage, but the Paris Eternal, they answer back, and those Holtz, again, just comboing it up with Sparkle. Really bad? Fourth place? Okay, well, you know, in comparison to what we have them. And be a bit of I, I judge by how much I see San Francisco Shock fans crying on my timeline. And it was a lot. He takes space, and if he gets pressured... And, but Shock also had some really bad stages, right? Oh, wow, that pull was nuts. FD God goes down, though. FD, Shock fans turned on FD God? Yeah, Shock fans, like, love to blame, like, FD God and Nero. The classic. Much of a deterrent as you can really ask for, but the fusion is not gonna really back off here. Blade is gonna be used now by Sparkle. One dash Sparkle Blade! Ooh. Goes straight away in there with the dash reset. Nice. Somehow gets the value that he needed, and the fusion are gonna have to back off and reset. Huge blade by Sparkle. Oh, soon. Really nice. Oh, soon. Gets the better end of Carpe. Oh, All right, Custa, hot, hot take, Custa. But if the Shock had, still had Moth, they would have made it to the Grand Finals. I don't know about beating Dragons, though. See, here's the thing, right? I feel like you're encompassing a lot of the what like the fans say. is like Moth had a really bad season as well in the same context that you're saying. He's, he barely played, right? Like, he didn't play that much. But, like, Moth, like what would have Moth added that FD God didn't add? Like... Oh, like maybe the brig and that kind of stuff, but that's like impossible to say. Like I feel like, I feel like people just they just default want to go back to literally they're just living in the past. It feels like a lot of the shock fans are just living in the past of I want to go back to 2020. Just take me back to 2020 when everything was good and we were just default the best again, right? Like things change. You never stay on top forever. Welcome to what it feels like to be every other team in the league that isn't the Shanghai Dragons, where you have good seasons, you have good things, you have strong players, you have weak players, right? Big finals matches. We don't see it very often. Teams are hyper focused on the match at hand. But soon, as soon as he subbed in, man. He's coming out with the spice. Yeah, and now soon has this bomb ultimate to try and contest it. You see, Carpe sends his in. Nikio does have a blade, but Bob's not in a good position here. Not even contesting the point, so Paris Eternal, they just back off. Play the angles, and now ultimates are going to start to get traded once more. Hanbin has the flux ready and waiting. Looking for the right time to try and let it off. And finally, besides, now is the time. Not really letting it go, in fact. Still holding on to it. Finally going to be using it, but now it's... Alright, I feel like I have to- I feel like we have to talk about this because it chat's freaking out. Okay. There's a lot of people who keep saying proper is overrated and that the shock are gonna be bad this year. Or like average this year, right? I have still yet to hear a reason from anyone who says that proper is overrated defining why proper is overrated. No one has been able to tell me 
why he is overrated. I've had like multiple people come into my stream and be like, think, I feel like you guys are just def saying it for the sake of saying it, like contrarian. I'm just like, yeah, everyone's saying prop is great. Well, I'm going to say he's not that good. Patrick is based. <laughs> I heard DBA say proper is underrated. If you have watched proper gameplay in the last year, there, there is no, there is nothing that points towards the fact that proper is over, uh, overrated. He is the best DPS prospect coming into the league by far, by like a good margin. He is like, he has been the best performing Korean player in contenders. He's been dominant. He has had a lot of success. And it, like everyone who has ever been around him has said he is incredible. So it's hard to justify. What is the thing? Piper is amazing, but from what I've been seeing, he's, uh, people saying he's going to be a front runner for MVP. Yeah, but just because you think that's unrealistic doesn't mean it's not true. Right, and I feel like there's a lot of people coming in with those takes of like, I don't believe that someone could do that. When a lot of the pe most informed people uh, who have watched him, who have casted him, who have played with him are saying it, that he is as good as everyone is hyping him up to be. Finally, biding their time, find an opening enough to take and retake and recap this point. Necessary, completely necessary. Absolutely. As I said, I wouldn't even have a problem if someone gave me a reason. As, and don't take this as me attacking you. I just want to know why people are saying it. If you can give me a good reason of like, I don't think his flexibility is as good as people say. I actually think that he was pretty weak. I think he was carried by his teams in these Korean contenders. Okay, we are not fighting on my desk in the middle of a YouTube video, ch cats. They must hold this next fight against Sparkle's Superblade. Otherwise, they will go down 3-2 in the series. All right, so that let's go. Devastating on their map pick of Nepal. In potentially final fight territory. Huge pick. Big pick off, and they want to go anyway. Fury they gets FD God and Sparkle. Nice. The fusion, they play this perfectly. FD God goes down early. Yeah, that was only window by Philly. Well. That's pretty big. He couldn't make the decision. Let them fight. He lays it down and wastes the ultimate. That's almost perfect for the Philadelphia Fusion. You could not have asked for it to be better. You repel the push, and the supercharger is wasted. That's great stuff. If Thank you, Sparkle didn't blade. Yeah, it was smart to not blade. They got a lot of ults. They can literally just use the bob as a distraction. Literally, I think you just bob as a distraction and then blade in. Drop a window. It's like it's kind of like um what we talked about last time with Philly. Just press Q. See, here's the problem. They bobbed, but no one followed it. So Bob is dead before it even did it. Does anything? Like so, I don't understand the value of the bob. Like if you're gonna use it, you gotta go. Oh, soon it's just. Like, Woo! Are you kidding me? What was that? Dash into the bash and no, oh, my goodness. We're not showing cats, chat. We're already showing cats. We can't show too many cats. Really think about how he wants to be using this ultimate. EQ, oh my goodness. All right, let's go. Now we got the blade, finally. Into the dragon blade as well. Can he find anything? He's hit by the He's got good value. Did Fury ult? Fury ulted there. And he does eventually fall. The Sigma down for the Philadelphia Fusion. And that's going to be the tank wow. line. 99%. And EQ, he's going to come up huge. EQ, oh blade? Finds one. He's going to get the dash reset. That was really well played by EQ, oh. Gets the one, forces them back, gives them the space. Doesn't overcommit to die. Find a pick off. Moving forward now, but the amplification matrix from Paris. It's going to be laid down, and that window is a boatload of damage to try and push away the fusion as they try to recontest this one. Soon, with the follow-up kill there onto Carpe, the damage dealers are being dealt with. Paris Eternal moving forward once more with the tank ultimates. Hand been using that Gravitic Flux just to peel them away, and finally going to be utilizing it to pull them all the way into the sky. Ooh, Paris okay, Paris. Victorious with that one. Three to two in our grand finals. I'm going to miss seeing soon and now, yeah. What a showing from Paris. They've had two maps picked against them now. Two control maps. Li Zhang and Nepal. I would say age two. They fell. 2019, they fell to the San Francisco Shores. All right, here we go. On to Blizzard World. 3-2 to the Paris Eternal. They only made the semis before going out against... All right, this is definitely going to be a Genji map. This is just straight up a Genji map. Paris definitely have the advantage on control just due to their flexibility of being able to play multiple things. This is best of five. Uh, no, this is first of four. Best of seven. 
All right, one second. We got a pause. But his Genji was a classic pick for them throughout 2018 season. Uh, this is going to be a bit of again on the um, at... yeah. From Exe is trying to shut down. All right, here we go. From EQO. Uh, let's take a look. Oh, the halt comes over. Bit of halt and dynamite there, trying to see if Carpe can build up as much damage as possible. But he is essentially going to be uncontested with these long sight lines. No one. I don't know what is. Down. Literally, look at this. He's essentially, going to be uncontested. Literally, everyone's just hugging it out. Like, everyone is literally standing in each other's face. This is tiny Overwatch at its finest. Sightlines. No one will pressure Carpe. He dash through. You can see Sparkle already up to 40% of his ultimate. He's trying to prioritize that blade build up. Oh, nice whip. Nice whip shot to peel away. That was such a good whip by Alarm, but yeah. Away from the fight there, but everyone on Fusion is very, very low. But not before Sparkle goes down himself. So a nice even trade. Holy Machine Gun Cassia. Yeah, you guys remember the good times? Man. Given a window of opportunity. Paris got a little bit too aggressive, it feels like. I don't know how they got punished so hard. Not a very good pull by uh, Sato there. I feel like Philly should fight this. If they let them regroup, there's a chance they lose. Ah, oh, they're rallying. Sorry, I didn't see that. I think this makes sense though because Sparkle Yeah, you still blade here 100%. He can find any value with his blade and if EQO can be stopped, then there might oh? be Oh. Oh. Oh, good counter by Billy. Beautiful plays by the fusion just to try and negate that. Putting in so much work. Dude, this Bob is just free shooting. somehow still have players in this fight, but All right. finally Ben Best Good first attack by Philly. Cost them everything, but Paris also used everything to hold. I forgot how much CC there was in this. Like, this is how good Genji was. He's literally getting hard countered, yet he still gets played. Sparkle has been shut down on so many of these blades, more so than against any other team. And I think Bob is one of the most balanced ults. Yeah, I actually really, I think Bob is a really good ult. I think it's very strong if used in the right situation, but for the most part, like, if you just throw it, it's bad. And that's how ults should exist, right? They should be circum like, you shouldn't just default get value when you press the button. He is hitting some nasty accretions to shut down Sparkle's blades. And if you can Like, there should be a cost factor. Or, like, timing factor that needs to be used. But they are not out in the slightest. Battling back, trying to gain any advantage they can in Blizzard World. It's the playground in which they're doing so. Bob is a weirdly high skill ult. It's just like, it's very easy to use Bob poorly, right? Ra ba Rally would like to, see and that's it. Like there are ultimates in the game where you just, through default, are just really, really valuable, right? Like I would say, like Diva Bomb, um, Rally, like those kind of things. Like it just feels like you're always gonna get value in some way. It almost feels too good. EMP, yeah. Like it's pretty hard to have a really bad EMP. Flux, nah, Flux, you can fuck up, and the fact that you can get stunned out of it. I would agree with you if you go. Oh, that was a big dynamite. Yeah, that was a carry by Carpe. Memp disagrees. Yeah, but, you know, you can't fix. I was going to say you can't fix stupid, but he's obviously not stupid. You can't fix. Just, like, obvious mistakes. Three minutes is what they've got, and they're making the most of it. Sparkle looks like he wants to go for a contest. Ooh. Oh, another rock from Fury. They have been so consistently excellent. Hadn't been on the ball just to try and contest point B, but this does. This is this is getting out of control here for Philly. Ah, uh, for Paris, sorry. Lip simp calling him stupid. Red will have your head. <laughs> Did you talk badly about my lip? <laughs> Clutches pearls. <laughs> this is another case. Like, I actually really like how Paris have played a lot of this series in terms of player selection, um, comp selection. My only problem is this Xe Widow switch. He keeps switching Widow, and it doesn't feel like he's ever gotten the value that he needs to get out of it. Aiming to shut down EQO's blade. EQO is. Kind of held but he only lost one map in the Genji mirror. Yeah, like I, I absolutely believe that. I think the um, I think the tank line, the way that Philly use their pulls and their rocks and that kind of stuff is better. I also think Alarm's Brig is like really good. <clears throat> Sorry. Also, Carpe's Ash is just getting infinite more value than Xe's. I think it's just getting way more value. Carpe is like Bob damage. Like as much as I think Sparkle is diffing, like 
the Genji. I think he's just cleaner and he's doing better. Like, I think Carpe's getting more value on the hit scan. I think the tank line is doing better for the Philadelphia Fusion. And, like, the back line, I think, would be somewhat similar. Um, but, like, the little things is really, like, crazy. Like, yeah, the, just the Dynamite Holts just feel like they're getting so much value over and over again. And they're using Bob effectively. Hello, Aya. I see you. Carpe can land a headshot. Yeah, it is completely reversed. And Philly are getting closer and closer to big ultimates. The rally's already... Good flux. That is a huge gravitic flux off onto the side there. Fury finding three targets. It's an early immortality field used. And Ikyo is still holding onto his blade, remember. And now that that's gone, Spark is going to be trying to make a name for himself as well. Look at this, going straight in with the blade, but shut Do you guys see how... Philly has done this almost every time as well lately. Every time Sparkle goes in with the blade... Boombox almost instantly lamps and alarm rallies. And I think that's smart to have the um to have the lamp because it just stops that odd chance that like alarm dies before the rally really gets the value. That was so many ults by Philly. What was that? Five ults? Again it's alarm, but it's a whole Rock as well, yeah. The Philadelphia Fusion like no other team we've seen have been able to shut down. Yo, what's up? It's Karaz, how you doing? It's way with this tournament so far. And this is the only team that has had an answer. The only team with the coordination and the ability to retreat. Shock have the coordination, but they love pressing aggressively. But Philly, they're more tempered. They they know when to retreat and when to back off, and they respect Spock. I mean, Supercharger can build all those ults back up. I don't think that's really how Supercharger works. Especially if you have no way of defending your supercharger. Just to try and negate some of the presence that Fusion are applying. Supercharger goes down, which may have been one of the goals, and it's going to remove a bit of the bite from the Fusion as they try and push this one in through the side. Oh, nice. The Fusion. We pit off a little bit more than they could chew there, as you can see. Xe with the dead eye as well. Way too much damage to try and negate to push through, along with that amplification matrix. A lot of ultimates used by Paris there, but necessary to try and stop. Lip Sombra is really high level MMO character with nearly all maxed out stats, but dump his stat was EMP quality. <laughs> Honestly, true. Like, oh no, well, we, we like to meme Lip's EMPs, but they actually were quite good in 2021. Like, it was obviously a bigger meme in 2020, but I think he, his EMPs did improve a lot. Because that's what Paris Eternal are looking for. The extra damage applied what if you could heal Supercharger? Nah, nah. Supercharger's a good ult. You just need to think about where you're putting it. Wow, it's dangerous. That was a... I don't, yeah, why was Ben Best over there? Oh. FDGAR got pulled off the map? Boombox went down, but still the fusion pushing forward. EQO going to be prioritizing that supercharger, and he does just that. Blade coming out now. EQO. No. Find him, though. He's not Did he miss? Flux. He's not gonna get his oh, that was. Ooh. Find three kills. EQO. EQO up. is just back. feeling it now. Ridiculous movement. Completion. The capture for the fusion. That was spicy by EQO. Seconds remaining. But time in the bank, though, and that's absolutely crucial. EQO. Get blown. That has really helped them so far, along with alarm. Tangy, in fact, so spicy it's tangy. Regida has been genuinely game-changing for the Philadelphia Fusion. People doubted him on it at the beginning, but he has just been so good. Dude, look at how big that halt is. God. What an amazing EQO blade. Surely he won't top that. Yeah, no chance, right? Oh. That was a that was a weird scenario, yeah. I don't remember this map, but my guess is that Paris gets held on second. I feel like the Ash is going to get crazy value on second. I'm the only one who doesn't understand how EQO has not been signed. Well, remember, EQO in 2020 only played for the Genji meta. He didn't come out and play any other time. Um, so if I, it's, it's hard to really know because, like, he seems like a great player who just never played on Philly. He played a lot more in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see what he's Actually peppering in damage into Fury. Fury is unaware. But the Bob did force the positioning. EQO trying to get that kill into FD. Got desperate for it. The dash into the wall, but he does get out alive. And oh, EQO blade. blade. <gasps> Ooh, that was CC watch right there. Flash EQO played lots of Sombra, yeah. Him in his tracks. Now XC going for a flank. He's hungry. He can smell the blood in the water. Boombox to a quick little 180. 
Oh, oh, uh, dude, all of Paris is one health. Dude, look at how much health Paris had here. Their entire team is so close to death. There's crazy they're not going to die for that. And now you see Paris Eternal just trying to take advantage of the fact that they're a little bit staggered positioning of the fusion is all Lamp OP, yeah, Lamp pretty good ability. With a lot of ultimates here that they can still expend if they feel like it's getting hairy. Sparkle on 14 health gets taken out. Why is people shooting in the back harder than shooting people in the front? It's because I don't think you can predict their movements. I feel like when people are looking at you, that you can understand and like predict their movements. When they're not looking at you, it's like you don't even know where they're going. So it's like, how am I supposed to know where I'm going? That was a two-man flashbang from EQO onto EQO and Fury. Almost looked like an Earth Shatter. You don't normally see multiple stuns up at the top unless there's a Rhino on the field. But th I, I think we need something spectacular from Carpe or from EQO in order to hold this momentum. Well, Paris look set to continue. They have six ults. Six I'll ults is a problem. Bob, which a couple of times he's just saved it, waited for. A lot of them lean forward. Yeah, if you're trying to shoot Anna in the back, good luck. A bit of extra peel, you know, on top of the whip shot, the shield bash, whatever else they've got. But this is not a very good window. Lead this one in. They're going to use the amplification matrix, but it's very far back, which means that the fusion they can just wave around the shield. They're not really bothered. They're not really fussed about it. They're going to wait it out as the Paris Eternal are now going to start to rotate to the high ground. But they are going to be waddling, wading into a bit of a dangerous threat. Still going to be using ultimate here. EQO's blade. He's going to remove a lot of the utility. Takes it out, but Sparkle answers back with one of his own. Gets the kill. Very low in the process. This is a... Regardless of if Philly, if Philly loses, this is a pretty good fight for Philly. Everyone fell so that was so that was literally six ults from all oh, five ults because actually didn't use the high noon. That was a lot of ults, and that was a pretty close one. But they cannot stagger out of this fight. The tank line cannot die. The tank still at the high ground and field was really weak. Oh, how does EQO find FD God in all of that? Dead Eye is cosmetic. That's honestly so true. Dead Eye is so hard to get value, especially in like against double shield like Ash. If that card got halted in the in the street, then Fusion would have had to give up the high ground here. Didn't use window. They use window before the fight. They're going to rotate to the high ground themselves. Yeah, now this is going to be a much more even engagement as well. Philly have done such a good job here of bleeding out the ult bank of the Paris Eternal. They got an amp matrix to take control with. Oh, that's so nice. That, that was value high dead eye right there. Valley field as well. A huge <laughs> Ooh, EQO so goes down. Valley's big though. Paris don't have any ults. Oh, but they're winning anyway. You guys remember when I said that Philly was going to win on the second point? I might have been wrong. <laughs> Boombox coming down from orbit. Just, I just <laughs> be like, yo, I'm going to go up. I'll see you guys soon. Now deflect. Yep, doesn't work against huge rocks. Oh, look how good Fury is, though. I don't think he's missed an accretion this entire match. So it's absolutely bonkers. What are you doing? We don't talk about him too much as being the best uh, off tank in the world anymore. There have been, you know, other candidates that have maybe stolen his throne a little bit, but Fury remains absolutely one of the elites, and he's making a good argument for him to return to the top this in this series. So interesting because Was Boombox a flex or a main support flex support? He has a gravitic flux, and I think he's trying to force the back line out by moving forward. They know he's got his ult. They've actually done a pretty good job of getting value out of these high noons. <gasps> Ooh, Fury almost walked into that. Dangerous. Oh, good pull. Dashing through the snow. Wow, and he. Oh, wow, he almost lived. Dude, look how fast Cassidy shoots in this situation. Alarm rallies, but dies. EQO? EQO? Oh, he got a ghost slash. Wow. Dude, EQO, man. It had just an absolutely crazy series. It's so much What's that, his third clutch of the series already? The same clutch plays that he was making back in 2018 on the Genji as well. And Sparkle, he actually... Surely he won't top that. Again by Fury when he went in with that blade. Even though he had... There's no way it gets better than that, right? Fury again is just so difficult to get past. 
and just by slowing him down ensuring that the fusion oh good pull for uh fl uh flux wonderful play by sado to pull them together but xy takes him out and xy now has free range dude xy is just free firing dude it's unreasonable how fast the Cassidy shoots here I EQO, I'm going to need Eternal you to kill Eternal seven with the blade again. This one. The Pirates Eternal have the rally. They have so much health to work with that this card doesn't look like it's stopping anytime soon. A couple of players remain, but it's not enough. The Pirates Eternal get that capture with a bit more time on. All right. Overtime, baby. Blizzard World. Really happy with yep. We talk about yep. Pirates versus Philly. And it's going to be Philly rolling out. Same comp as usual. A lot of eyes going to be on Carpe and EQO to try and form, to try and find those openings necessary to crack this point open. I believe last time it was an early kill on Sparkle. Just trying to go a little too aggressive. So he's got to be a bit more measured in his approach. Carpe taking control. To what you're saying, Phoenix Kid, of like, it's impo it's hard to justify a rookie coming in and being MVP of the league. I completely agree with that. I think... I don't think you can say, I think you're overhyping proper if you're saying, um, I think you can say that you're overhyping proper if you're saying that he's going to win MVP and you're like pretty sure. I agree with that. But I think saying he's a leading favorite for rookie of the year and one of the best prospects is by no means overhyping the caliber of player that he is. Like if someone's just like, oh, he's 100% going to win MVP this year. He's the best player in the world. Like I agree that that's overhyping, but I don't know anyone who's saying that. Crumbling, reminiscent of the King's Road that we've seen earlier, when the fusion only had a minute. Drone did it. Well, that's kind of <laughs> like Alarm almost did it, right? Yeah, Alarm almost did it. Drone did it. Obviously, first season, but that doesn't really count. Um, Pelican. I people like to say that Pelican was close to Rookie of the Year uh, MVP, but I don't think Pelican was close to MVP. I think he was probably like, in my opinion, Pelican would have been like fifth or something like that sixth and he does it again builds up to if that like i'm trying to remember there were a lot of players i had over pelican as better in that year too far forward he gets taken out i think ben best halted him forward so now eq he goes gonna make a play but he dies in the process josh oh eq dying there without blade philly just needs to hold this fight the damage is being done oh clicks from sparkle too much he doesn't even have the blade but he does not need it and now Sparkle builds one of his own straight into the fray, straight into the mortar. Yeah, how did EQO die there? Sorry, let me let me go back and look yeah, at that. EQO style of Genji, kill focused, trying to get those confirmed final blows, and he does it again, builds up to a blade, and he can keep this rolling. Oh, Carpe's way overextended, actually. And then EQO went in to save him. Oh, that was really bad. That was a hard throw by Philly. That was, yeah, that was... That was bad. Able to carry purpose, but they must with their defense here. One minute and 44 is only really two pushes. Unless Shock wins, proper MVP is hard to call. Yeah, I think it, Shock are going to need to do really well this year for people to think that proper could win MVP. 44 seconds in comparison to what the Fusion had to work with. The Fusion, they've got to play perfect, picture perfect to try and stop this, keep their hopes and dreams alive here. The Paris Eternal may be walking away with it. Well, I do think that EQA did very well in the series. Fusion would have had a better chance of winning if they played Ivy instead. It was a hot take. But would you want Ivy to play Genji? Like, they need a Genji player. Oh, wow. Like, how would they have almost won if... I, I don't think I agree with that. I feel like you need the Genji, and I think EQA has already shown his caliber of player on Genji. Ivy plays Genji? Yeah, but like... As well as EQO did, like I guess I understand that you, what you're saying of like he gives them more flexibility because that's been, I, in my opinion, Fusion's biggest issue in this series is flexibility. But do you think Ivy's Genji was as good as EQO? EQO's had some nutty blades and like nutty plays. He has made a large difference in terms of his... Like, I, obviously, it's almost impossible to say, like, you know, Ivy's good at Genji, but it's like, well, could he have had the same level of impact as EQO? That's, like, literally, like, such a hard hypothetical to answer. They must hold. 30 seconds remain. Alts online. The fusion in the Ivy was Philly's Genji play in Countdown Cup or after this? Yeah, that is interesting. I thought he got benched after the Genji nerfs. Wow, that was such an important hold accretion. Sparkle dying. Because Sparkle's the blade as well. No more blade. 
Paris, they have to go now, and they do not have their star player to make it work for them. Rotating around onto the point, it's going to be another Gravitic Flux here again. For yeah, the that was kind of a... Fury. That was, that was so unfortunate. Literally, I think anyone else could have died other than Sparkle, and it could have been salvageable. But losing Sparkle... Oh, Ben Best is pissed. What a stellar performance from the Philadelphia Fusion. They... Hybrid maps... Hybrid maps. They don't look as good when it comes to the regulation Stop. time. They don't complete with as much time on the point. But that second round, where the clutch... Really All right. Matters, that all right, chat. It's time for what is considered to many as the best match of Overwatch ever, best map of Overwatch ever played. Here we go, Rialto. It's time. All right, Bo, you're getting kicked out for this. That sent them to that fifth map against the shock. It really was his uh, his standout performances, the, the Genji brawl composition that we've been talking about so much. Both of these teams clearly believe that it is the uh, the better playstyle. Goodbye, boy. He's kind of teasing us. Philadelphia now games that are in play right now, as we're in our potentially, and I say potentially, but it is. Let's be real. The final map here of the summer showdowns between the Paris Eternal and the Philadelphia Fusion. My word has been a good one. Exe is going to have to play like a beast in order to stop Carpe just destroying them here. This is one of the best Widowmaker or maps that we have in the pool. And Carpe is going to have a lot of angles to be able to work with. Yeah, It's down to Exe and Sparkle really to win this one for the Paris Eternal. See the Hulk comes out. The Rock blocked there by a shield. That was Fury. Check him PC. Not normal. And this time the Paris Eternal rotating over to the high ground. While Cass on this map is terrible. He's been playing it like very flanky. One of the players down onto it, which is EQO. Hulk comes through, dash into it. Sparkle up to seven, almost 70% of his blade, but EQO goes down. Dude, they're, they're just, the, just the pool dashes are so much better. 80% to blade. He gets a blade in like 40 seconds. Oof. And he has that how you feel about Cass over? I don't like the Cass over the Ash. I've sort of talked about this. I think with how they're playing around the pools, I think you're better off having the dynamite. Not, not caring honestly about what the Philadelphia Fusion would do to him. And he is. Where's two? Ooh. And they have immediately captured point A. And Philly aren't even set up on the high ground here. This is weird. Normally you would see. The fusion immediately set up on high ground and start putting pressure on Paris as they cross the bridge. The, sp the other end of the Aiken blade is the sparkle blade, yeah. yeah Ooh! Out of position, but that's uh, pretty brilliant from Carpe, if I do say so myself. That's a little onto XE. That is great for them. You can see the dash yeah, that's, that's dead. I think it, it's going to be pretty hard for Paris to cross this bridge. This is a, especially with the Cassidy. I don't think they have the damage to get across this bridge. Brilliant pickoff. At the beginning. Couldn't they play Diva to E pools? This yes. Very powerful position to hold. And I think that would have been an interesting thing to talk like if there would if like people would have eventually done it. But, but the thing about doing that is I wonder if you just don't have enough shields. Like if you play the Diva, I feel like you could potentially just like bleed out on the front line. And I worry about what And also you're giving up your own pool flux, pool rock. All that kind of stuff, right? FD God gets whipped. Carpe's Bob. I mean, it is going to go down, but at the end of the day, they've got the opening pickoff. Now, the cart is moving, <laughs> which should force Fusion to kind of act and drop down, maybe. They're rotating pretty well, and that gives Paris some space. You can see the mind games as they're starting to rotate up onto the high ground, but it is just. Would you be looking at Matrix? That's a good point as well. Like, you can eat the pools and the dynamites, but there's a lot of stuff outside of that that could be like. You can't eat everything. Here. It would be lovely for them to be able to push the high ground, but it turns out that Philly didn't go for the for the defense. Oh, Carpe. Carpe. And Carpe going down is absolutely huge. Yep, and this is the corner where you need to defend. It's one of the most defensible positions in Rialto. They've lost one of their star players. The blade comes out from Sparkle. Doesn't get too much done, but it does remove the supercharger. And that gives oh, Alarm's dead. Wow, great play by Harmbin. Damn, that was a mistake. Carpe's made a couple of pretty crucial mistakes here in this series thus far. Like, that's another pretty bad one getting caught. He should not be that isolatable. Easily. 
easily got through one of the most e uh, difficult sections. With four and a half minutes, they are attacking point C. And Carpe cannot make mistakes like that. We scolded him. Hamid had an argument to be the best. Yeah, yeah Hamid, like, was one of the best Sigmas during this time. Fruition, but if he doesn't see the consequences, perhaps he won't learn the lesson. This is a lesson Whoa. he needs to learn. Trying to put in that damage. The flashbang comes through. It's one piece of utility gone, and that's the rest of the fusion. Look at that, just diving straight in. Able to find the openings that they needed. The picks. The Arisa, picks. yeah, that Arisa don't give a fuck. Just hanging out, just taking yeah, taking shurikens to the face. Right because they gave him so much ground so early on in this map. The fact that they stopped the bleeding is, is a good sign. Oh, good pull on the Fury. Oh, not enough. No, people weren't close enough. That's gonna give them an opportunity to take control of the upper levels. You think Krong fell up was his team? Probably his team. Down to Paris building up alts, essentially. I don't think they'll actually want to... Bong Joe were pretty doo-doo last season. And the dead eye? Oh, if Carpe... If Carpe, Carpe is, is once again in fucking Narnia. He can get isolated. If he... Like, if the Genji finds it, like, if Sparkle finds him, he just dies. Oh, EQ Oblade. But actually follows it up onto Carpe. The trades. Nice oh. mechanics. EQ Oof. Spicy, dude. More than enough. And that's why the flashbang's not very good. I think it's so hard to get value out of the flashbang. I really don't like the cast. I think of Sparkle as the more mechanically gifted Genji, but EQ is no slouch whatsoever. He combines that veteran understanding of how the game works with honestly fantastic mechanics. EQ cranking 90s, dude. The 90s have been hard and fast right now. That's how good EQ is on the Genji himself, how well he fits into the playstyle of the fusion. Showcasing it here and now. But the Paris Eternal got openings because you can see the ults are coming online almost up another big thing about ash over cassidy is that the bob is just a much better ultimate than the the high noon which isn't that was an interesting flux but it worked great collapse on the sparkle half hp the dive attempt was there and another team fight win this is pretty good for the a beautiful shutdown that's fury again he gets the gravitic flux. He flux his own team. Yeah, he got the Genji, but I feel like he they usually ask for more, right? The Genji's dash cooldowns. And he does there. A sparkle goes for the engage. There's a QO towards the end as well. This is just a replay of his previous blade. Oh. He was able to tear people to pieces. But we're gonna cut that a little bit. Yeah, they, this this map is like way too fast paced to actually run a replay. They have all the ults they could possibly need. A lot of ults indeed. Rally. Oh. Through Sparkle with the blade stun bashed up, taken out again by Fury. The Fury rocks have just been on point. The bashes is into the rocks. Like, Philadelphia Fusion have got it down to like a T. Oh. That was brutal. What? Exe, the dead eye into the Gravitic Flux. Straight up in the air, and they gave them the angle. That was a big flux. The opening he needed to capitalize. And just when you think Sparkle shut down. The fight is over. The push is ended. They answer back, and you remember the oh, highest noon. Me. Yep, XC, one of the best McCree's. Carpe invisible this map. Yeah, Carpe has not been doing so a lot. To find value within this meta, but the flux combination. Maybe the Ash is too long range with how close these combats are being. Defensive heroes. How do you defend this? Paris Eternal have already taken all of the position necessary, and AQO is weak. XC just plinking people from. The FD God dies. How does FD God die? Potential here though, as they're trading out the players, but. Sparkle goes down from the hip shot. Woo! Carpe still alive, pumping in the damage. They can breathe a sigh of relief. Wow, Paris have like no ults here as well. This should be pretty hard to lose for Philly. Not letting them push, but it is final fight territory right now for the Paris Eternal. No ultimates to work with. Not even really a lot of time as well for them to get in here. This is desperation from Paris. They need some huge play from Exe. Otherwise, Philly, with their amazing defensive play, are going to hold Paris Look at away from a full well. completion. Yeah, a lot of ults to be able to work with. It seems insurmountable. The advantages that Philly has are huge, but we've seen weird things happen so far in this series. Both of these teams are so good. I feel like this is way too passive from Philly. Like, why is Philly like... They should have gone. That was poorly done. And they have such a big advantage. They have so many ults. Just press Q. Alright, it's fine. Monstrous combo. EQO slicing through the opposition. That should end that push. Indeed, it does. The Paris Eternal are going to be stopping just... They're so far ahead, right? Oh, well, the Philadelphia Fusion could be quite pleased. I think it's stopping... Ah, oh, here we go. And this is really Look at this right-click. Ooh! No chance of being able to take 
control. And this is really, I mean, this is so stylish. As that was nasty. Good. Could you predict, Bren, right now, who's going to win this series? I, I, I couldn't. So. No. I have no idea. I have no idea in the slightest. I'm sure it's quite stressful. I'm a fan of both of these teams, so it is quite stressful for me <laughs> watching it, but I'm not sure who I want to win at this point. XE, going to be playing that Widowmaker, searching okay. for a shot or two. Exe on the Widow. The classic. It hasn't worked thus far, but maybe on the final map, it'll pop off. Nice dynamite damage. Fairly far back. Yeah. yeah, pretty decent dynamite damage. And that's normally the, the cue for Philadelphia Fusion. They'll try and get big Halt Dynamites and have EQO finish off a pick. But they need to play for the high ground first, I think. EQO's trying to play on the side here, Ooh. and he did get hurt a little bit. Now he's playing a bit more like Sparkle, getting himself involved in the team fight, getting that deflect up, but he's Ooh. still totally countered. The Paris Eternal did, did way more damage in that fight. Sparkle has built up a blade already. What in the what name was that? Okay. The what am I even looking at? And yeah, the, the, from the fusions there, you oh my god. Uh, signs. Sparkle's crazy. You this is the most evenly matched games of each. Yeah, probably. There's been a lot of back and forth, right? Try and build up EQO's blade. Pass the tunnel say, no, 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 no. Listen, listen, listen. You can't, you can't mirror what we've been doing this entire series long. They put an end to it with, uh, with their own. And now mada, they've mada. Said, Josh, they've got the blade. And XC's still on these long sight lines presenting it, but the blade comes out. A lot is done. They're booted back. They're sent backwards, but finally the kill comes through. Sparkle put in so much damage. So much All right, there you go. Able to clean up the team fight with the help of the rest of this team. EQO chooses death. Only the blade invested. That's fantastic economy from the Paris Normally you see blade and rally, or you see blade and supercharger, or sometimes like Philly have been doing the blade and the flux. But the fact oh, that Paris course, only man. had to use that single ult has buy, bought them Ooh. so much time. Ooh. Ooh. Alarm Ooh. just Alarm saved Boombox's life. The team didn't. Alarm's got keen eyes and he spots out the threat on the side. Yep. Situational awareness through the roof. Turbo was more evenly matched, but not in a good way. True. Windows probably going to go down. Indeed it does. So pumping damage through it. Both teams just trying to take it head on as they both use their amplification matrixes. But... Backwards now. Rally. Alarm use rally. That oh, they both use rally actually there, and neither of them got value out of it. Good flux. Oh, he dies for it though. There we go. Yeah, Fury and Alarm. They're such an amazing duo. They're normally defensive to shut down Sparkle. Tiny window, yeah, yeah. Offensively. Using the rally, using the gravitic flux, setting EQO up, and then pummeling everybody else when it comes down to that brawl. Are Paris really gonna try and defend this? Okay. Interesting. Exe? Exe? Exe finds two. Exe? It wasn't supposed to end like this on the flank. What a turn of a That was such a crazy play. just put so much damage. The gamble. It literally, I don't even care that he flanked over and over and over again. And think that was such an important like play. That is such a big failure for the Philadelphia Fusion to just not see that. So much damage just to be able to approach, and here it is. The replay. Oh. Had no idea in EQO that shot. His head only presented for a minimal amount of time. Who's the idiot saying XC sucked this series? I don't think he sucked. Like he was fine, but he definitely did not have the level of impact. That we like sometimes hear from. Get past this incredible sightline that XC has. The infraside is up. A pass a turtle. Oh, Bren. All right, here we go, chat. How cruel for Fusion to come. You guys ready for it? In the finals, and to have it. Here we go. By a clutch play from XC, it would almost be too much to bear. Hopes and dreams of the Fusion right now laying bare. Sparkle wants to try and put an end to it. Blade in hand, it's going right down to the distance as the overtime burns through. The Fusion need to find an opening. Sparkle not moving through, but X is on the flank. The headshot onto Carpe. One of their star players taken out early. And Boombox just left to his own devices. EQ gets Xy and Fielder. Fusion. Only a couple of players left remaining. EQO's gonna come up huge right now. Everyone is weak. EQO with the blade pulls it through, builds it up. Will it be enough? One kill, two kill. Are you kidding me? EQO now finds it with the what? third. And now it is overtime. XE moving oh. on. Tracer to try and deny, but EQO, EQO. What? what a player. What a star. Unbelievable. One of their star players can now move back down to the distance. Let, let's just, let's, we go back and we watch it. Now that you've appreciated, we go back and we rewatch it. Burns through. Fusion need to find an 
He, so Exy's there. I don't even know how Ikuo gets there. But Ikuo kills Exy. Then kills Filder. Fury gets FD gone. And then he kills Ben Best. Hanbin. Sparkle. And then this this last right click on the Xy. Fucking crazy. And then one taps Filder. This is my this kill on Filder is my favorite one. He just fucking murders Filder. Yet seven. Oh my god. Gone with the wind. We remember him. Holy shit. I have chills, Brian. That's the single most monstrous clutch I think I've Best ever play ever. It was so... Absolutely insane. Somehow responds. The clutch blade at the end as well. I'm in shock. And that's why we love Genji plays, yeah. That should have been the series, but EQO has kept them in it. He's handed them a lifeline. And now we'll see if the fusion... Cast back in, yeah. Supercharger here available. Literal chills. There he is. His first. Both teams trade. And Ikuo again. Ben Best goes down. Immortality field goes down as well. A lot of openings here. Ikuo with the dash resets once more. Finding so many opportunities. He's already built up the blade. Everyone is crumbling on Parasar. And how Oof. can he not? I'm still in disbelief that Ikuo has clutched that out. And I think Parasar as well. They probably thought that that was the series done and dusted. And now Philly... In stunned silence, they move forwards. EQO with another blade. This could be huge. Boombox as well with a massive amp matrix. That's going to force oh. Paris to totally disengage. Hadn't been forced to use his ult, but EQO goes down. EQO going down could be critical. Could be the difference between losing this series and winning it. Sparkle with the blade. Sparkle gets got. The shield bash from Alarm. He's always been on point. He's always been there. And Carpe had his back with the headshot as this, well. Oh, that was a good pull. Dirty pandemonium on the point. The final section here, Fury trying to find openings for his Dude, team. it is chaos. But nobody dies because everyone's rallying. <gasps> oh my god. Oh my god, how is he? Hey, you gotta pull it, bro. Oh my gosh. Oh, Philly, no. That was so close to Philly winning that fight. But he just needed to invest it there. He they have supercharged. Ikuo should have held that. If he holds that blade, they win this fight straight, very easily. In. There's only 10 seconds remaining, Bren. Ben Best has moved over to the Reinhardt, and I think this might be it for Philly. Holds it off the high ground. Could be a good opening, and Carpe finds it. The headshot. This is a good spot. bongo still. Shuts him down. The overtime will tick. An opening for them. Oh! Shutter. Last ditch effort here. Ben Best tries to find it, and he connects. So much damage. Colonel, finding so many. Exy with the flank of a sentry to flashbang fan the hammer. Reminiscent of a dominant team once before, but here we have it. The Paris Eternal pumping in the damage, shutting down the fusion, and they denied him of their crown. They denied him of their champion title. The Paris Eternal Ooh. take the series. Well, the Philadelphia Fusion made them work for it, but Paris Eternal are your champion. I just love this, that they're all dancing and cheering, and feel this just... <laughs> in NA that is fantastic what a series wow. what a final what a clutch from EQO to even keep them alive in it in the first place but Paris in back-to-back -back series pick Rialto and take it away they take the win over the shock they upset the defense EQ is not fucking happy EQ is pissed dude again and how cruel how cruel Philly fans will bemoan as they they were stalled out in the finals of stage two in 2019. They were stalled out in the grand finals of 2018 against the London. Fury, if Fury does that every time they lose, he likes they uh, hides the camera. A title. Oh man, the good times. All right, before we head off. Again, uh, with a higher FPS.
The Fusion need to find an opening. Only a couple of players left remaining. EQO's gonna come up huge right now. Everyone is weak. EQO with the blade pulls it through, builds it up. Will it be enough? One kill, two kill. Are you kidding me? Oh, yeah. Now finds it with the what? third. And now it is overtime. XE moving over to the trade to try and deny him. EQO. Ooh. EQO. What a player. What a star. Unbelievable performance. I love this edit. I remember seeing this. It's so cool seeing like how they go from scene to scene. everybody at home why he's still on this roster. Ah, no, we don't need to see that. Oof. Oof. The Genji versus Genji. And that's why it's considered one of the best matches of all time. Um, obviously, a lot of cool Genji plays happen on all the maps. There's a lot of back and forth, really close match just in general. But that final map, that Rialto, going back and forth. And, like, obviously, we're watching it here, and it doesn't really have that, like, obviously, pizzazz of watching it live. Watching that match live was, like, it's that, like, moment that you realize how much you love esports and, like, the competition. Like, it was crazy. When it, when it happened in real time. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know what you guys think of the match and all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, let me know what you guys think we should watch next. We're getting close to the end of this History of Overwatch series. I don't know how much of Season 4 I'm going to watch 2021. Um, because Overwatch 2 is around the corner. New Season of Overwatch League around the corner. So let me, guys know, uh, let me know what you guys want to see. Uh, I love you all. I appreciate you all. Make sure to like and subscribe on YouTube. Um, hit that notification bell so you can see more of my videos. There's going to be a, a tier list coming up for the new hour season um, for all the teams. There's going to be previews. There's going to be Overwatch 2 stuff. Make sure to check it out. Once again, thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Mwah.